Hello, Internet. Welcome here. We're glad for you. When I was in South Africa, you know, this is beginning to sound like Rhodesia. You know, we used to call them the win wees when we were in Rhodesia. And it's just a joke. Uh, but when I was in South Africa earlier this year, uh, we went to the farm, to a farm in the Kalahari. And uh, we recorded quite a few people, the videos, some of you have seen, a lot of them you will still have to see in the future. But we were not alone. There were actually uh, people there from KwaZulu Natal government, specifically in the form of uh, Reinhard Hartzenberg. And they've got a wonderful program going where they record people of all colors, all tribes, all everything, where they don't discriminate at all. And then these people tell them their story. And then it goes into an archive for future historians to use or people who want to see it. And we were very grateful for uh, Reinhard there because he's an expert cameraman, sound man, got fantastic equipment, of course. And he was kind enough to take me and Papa Whiskey, that is um, Peter Williams, as well as Peter McRae and myself. He was kind enough to drive us all the way from Durban to the, to the Kalahari Desert, which you can think is, is quite a trip. And we had a lot of fun on the way. And so while Andrew and myself was recording uh, some people, Reinhardt was recording as well. And now they've kindly uh, gave us access to their recordings. And this is what this coming video is about. Now, it might be in Afrikaans, it might be in English, uh, but it's very well done. Uh, some of them you might have seen before uh, on Legacy, where we made double interviews. Uh, but, you know, no interview is ever the same. Uh, conversation is, is always different because there's some different aspects. So, yeah, here they are. Um, have a look. And then in the, in the description, I will leave a link to this remarkable uh, place where you can go and look at many, many thousands of other recordings as well and see if you can uh, support these people. You know, we always anti-government. You know, whatever they do, we say is nonsense, and mostly that's true. Uh, but yes, one of the efforts which I actually, I think, praiseworthy and, and should be continued. <laughs> My name is Peter Williams and um, I'm here today with uh, Kurs Kruger and he was a 32 Battalion member and it is the 23rd of March 2023 and we are in the Northern Cape close to Groblaas Hoop at a game farm called uh, Toevlug Camp. So Kurs, just tell us about your early life and um, how you ended up in the army and where you went to. Uh, I was born and bred in uh, uh, ten of, the 10th of April 1953 in the, in the Leidenberg uh, district on a farm. Uh, no need for going to hospital. I was uh, born at the farmhouse and uh, went to school in that area. Later on did my matric in, in Morkenson. At that time the, the national serviceman was going on every a white guy in South Africa went to do his national service, so I went to the uh, uh, army uh, uh, gymnasium at Heidelberg, uh, did there, uh, became a part of the leader group, went to Forsyth, from Forsyth, uh, then it was in 1972, uh, from there uh, went and studied a little bit, uh, worked on a steel factory, high felt vanadium, and then uh, uh, doing our stunts at the border as citizen force and then in 1976 early I ended up at Bravo Group and uh, we, which became Treaty Battalion later as everybody knows. Okay, so that's a very interesting history and tell me uh, just for the viewers to see the, 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 the whole expense, when did you leave the army? I left the army in 2000. 
in 2000. Exactly, in 2000. Yeah. So you had a very, very long career. Uh, yeah, uh, 17 years military. 17 career. years yeah. military. I, I, I was called back to the military uh, after the, the 2000 time, but uh, that was to train some citizen force people for the new South African National Defence Force. So let's go back all the way to 1976. Obviously the um, Portuguese have relinquished power of um, Angola and Mozambique and some of the other colonies and you end up with a group called Bravo Group. Tell us a little bit about Bravo and what your involvement was there. Well, uh, everybody could read all the books that's already been available on the market written through Colonel Breitenbach and other people. But Bravo Group was just established out of the uh, FNLA forces and some, un and some UNITA forces uh, that was cut off uh, at uh, the Sila area that is uh, today is called the uh, Waku Congo uh, in the in the, uh, Kwanza Su uh, province of Angola at 70 kilometers south of uh, Bridge 14 and uh, what happened then is they ended up uh, becoming Alpha, Bravo and Foxbat, the three groups as you can read in the history books and uh, well it, they ended up and then on the 26th of March uh, actually, uh, 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 3rd Battalion or Bravo Group was already, the, the people that formed the group was already a little bit earlier, like December 1975, already started coming into the Caprivi Strip and they were then settled at, uh, at Upupa Falls and then uh, at 26th of March 1976, uh, that's why it's seen as our starter date, uh, they moved to Buffalo Base, and uh, then in uh, September, June, July, August, August, September, Colonel Breitenbach uh, developed the camouflage beret with the buffalo head on, and uh, with a with a credo purulu purkusi, and uh, all the red it goes with the history of of Treaty Battalion uh, available to everybody on the net or whatever, and then I was immediately sent by Colonel Breitenbach to start doing uh, the uh, weapon training, uh, South African weapons, because this renegades or, or whatever you want to call them, run, uh, uh, being captured and made Bravo Group, was then formed into three battalion, two battalion, and then obviously we had better weaponry, better clothes and everything. Uh, so they ended up, but they had to be trained in South African uh, uh, weaponry, like 81 millimeter mortars, 60 millimeter mortars, and not the 82s and things like that of the Russians and the Cubans that they have been used to. Yeah, that's very interesting. Of course, so you are Kruger, and you're not related to any of the other Krugers in the unit. We have a number. No, not of directly. I, I'm not, not directly related mm -hmm. to them, but uh, you know, all Krugers are related. Otherwise. They won't have the same surname Same because yeah. the original guy who picked the name of Kruger in Prussia was obviously only one and not mm. but he, he did it for his clan because mm. you know it's called clans mm. and yeah so all the Krugers later on ended up as part of the clan. So what's unusual about your name though you're not actually uh, Kurs Kruger you're actually Kurs Crocodile Kruger uh, so uh, explain uh, to us okay. how that nickname came about. <laughs> yeah. 1976, I was the first guy actually to be at Nova de Marsu, uh, which is called the 9th of March. Uh, I was the first guy doing 81mm uh, mortar training there with a, a group of people that was uh, dedicated to me by Colonel Breitenbach and uh, well, Commandant Breitenbach at the time. And then I did there, and the rest of the white people, was about five of them, uh, they were based at Buffalo, uh, uh, at a place called, uh, um, to be honest, it's, 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 it's Tiru Tiru, it's our first old reed hut with sandbag beds and things. And uh, Ram Ran uh, comes in once a week uh, with all the old newspapers and things for people to read and obviously the letters and the things from your family. and. Uh, then Chaila time, which is an old thing in Saturdays, 12 o'clock, uh, I led the people, uh, the, the troops going from the 
from the uh, the training base go back to to the to the kimbo mm -hmm. with the crow, which calls crow. It's, it means mm -hmm. crow, but it's where they left the the the, the, the soldiers, the three battalion soldiers, uh, sent them back, and then I were well, all by myself. Then I walked back. It's about seventeen kilometers uh, up the river. Walk back. I get there a little bit late, about half past five, five six o'clock at the base, talk nonsense with a few whiteys that was there. And uh, later on, you know, reading nonsense, one of the guys had a dear Johnny, so he was feeling sorry for himself, and I was reading a lot of nonsense out of the Cure magazine, and picked old nonsense stories and tell him, but this is, this is Susie from wherever or whatever, and she's looking for somebody in the military or whatever, just lying. I read my own stories out of my head and giving it to them, you know, to make him feel better. And then later on that night, I decided, listen, that I'm going to wash now. Normally there is this, this uh, sail, uh, 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 this canvas shower that you hang onto a tree. So then I picked that canvas shower uh, you know, it's hanging there, but I mean the river is much nicer, so I jumped into the river, you know, now, which is completely ridiculous. I did swim the river many times before, but always daytime, so it's it's quite stupid to be going in at night time. And, uh, but, uh, you know, at that age you don't really always think what you are doing. So I jumped into the river with my little bottle of shampoo on the, under the one armpit mm -hmm. and the soap under the ar one armpit. Uh, the boat, uh, the, the JD carpenter was lying there next to it. So I jumped in. One of the guys jumped in with me because, you know, it, it looked a little bit lacquer and the water is nice and cool. There was hippos in the main river, so I thought, okay, you know, that's kind of a protection. And then what happened the next moment, I just feel, but yeah, something went wrong because I just felt a bump on my upper left leg, mm -hmm. the femur, and a crocodile bit me, and I said to him, a crocodile bit me, and chaos works. He, he, he drowned me, he spent me, he gives me the death row, he really rolled down, and there was a very big tree that was uh, rooted up, and it lied next to, a, well, a little bit lower than the boat, but into the river, uh, and, and uh, the crocodile wanted to took me away again from the mainstream and, you know, put me away there in his mud hole mm -hmm. so that he can eat me whenever he feels hungry about it or eat me there or whatever his idea was. Mm -hmm. probably didn't want to share it with any of the other crocodiles. And ach, I beat him on the nose and turned his, 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 his uh, uh, front foot and, and you know, and, and, and it's quite interesting, a crocodile can roar as loud as a lion if, if there's pain on it. Mm -hmm. You can't believe it. I tried putting my fingers in his eyes, but it's not easy on a slippery old reptile like that. So in the end, I, I, I grabbed onto this tree and, and put my, head, my hand, my left hand, next to my uh, femur, mm -hmm. into his mouth and opened the valves that's in the back of his uh, throat. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, not in the back of his throat, but in his throat, uh, in the back of his mouth, actually. I opened that, and then he got water into his lungs, and obviously now he had to lose, because now he starts drowning. And as soon as he starts drowning, I kicked myself free, but my hand, and it was really a mess. So the doctor who was there, the, the national serviceman doctor, because there's always national serviceman doctors on the border, so... He, when he see all the blood and the things, he run away. Some friends come and troops shooting on the water with their AKs. Mm -hmm. It was a real circus. But I mean, everybody understands why. Because they can't shoot too close because then they can kill me. And mm. the crocodile gets away. Mm. But in any case, then I ended up being dragged out of the water and um, a lot of bomb bandages mm -hmm. into my wounds and polished, uh, patched up my, my hand and... Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as they can, they flow me to Bittersuit, which is out around the river with a with a Unimog ambulance. Mm -hmm. There they picked me up with a small little aeroplane, bundled me in the back behind the seat. There is one, only one seat mm -hmm. for the pilot, so they just throw me there in the cargo part. And then I'm off to Rundu. There they patch my hand up and just left everything as it is. 
I ended up in Grootfontein. The next day they flew, or well, the next day, the next morning, straight after my operation in Grundel, they flew me out with a C-160 uh, lying on top of a coffin, which was one of my friend's coffin, uh, uh, Lieutenant Swart. Mm -hmm. uh, he was killed at Amarone in a, in a landmine uh, uh, explosion under one of the Unimogs. And uh, then uh, I ended up in, 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 in Waterkloof there, they picked me up with a put my helicopter, dropped me off at one military hospital mm -hmm. and trying to fix me up. Mm -hmm. I was in hospital for a while, they never stitched me up because, you know, it's, it's rotting, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's dirty and everything. So they throw me in an ice bed because obviously your fever runs wild and mm -hmm. throw you in an ice bed to keep you, uh, your temperature mm -hmm. down and injections and, and cleaning and all sorts of things. and. And they use fly flies to clean the wounds, which is well not nice to, for people. But I mean, I I didn't really know everything about mm. it because that's the doctor's problem, not mine. So they stick me up, and after a month and a half, they just cut the rotten meat off and close the wounds and the wounds, and, and well, and later on, then I was back at Trinity Battalion. Wow, that's an incredible story. So, of course, let's just jump from one story to the next. I want to take you to the end of Ops Protea, where it was one of the few times the <coughs> entire unit was deployed operationally, yes. and the incident that occurred when the guys came back. And basically, we were all <laughs> taken to Oshivella, and General Heldenay spoke to us and debriefed us, and from there we went by road all the way back to Buffalo, yes. and there was this uh, incident, and if you can just run us through that incident. Yeah, well, it's actually a, a, a shame, but... Uh, you know, at the time it was funny and everything. Mm -hmm. It was a very big convoy, seven companies mm -hmm. really took a lot of vehicles mm -hmm. because it's seven times plus or minus 85 to 100 people. Mm -hmm. And with all their kit and everything that was used in the operation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, starting from Oshivalu in one big convoy, mm -hmm. I normally, I normally, that that's what, uh, I mean, that's, it's not my job, but mm -hmm. I normally pick the very last vehicle. To, to travel mm -hmm. in. It was a paper cap, Magirus Deutsch, mm -hmm. uh, before the real armor samples mm -hmm. came out. And uh, then I was driving back with the uh, uh, first uh, maintenance unit drivers. Mm -hmm. But in any case, there was uh, uh, fighting vehicles like the Buffels and, and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. also obviously. But most people were on open uh, 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 cargo carriers. Mm -hmm. Uh, with their kit and everything. And then, uh, well, coming out of the operation, we had our first line ammunition with mm -hmm. it and our second line ammunition in mm -hmm. reserve on the vehicles and, 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 uh, because, yeah, it, it was a small mistake. We had a big uh, a concert the previous night mm -hmm. by favorite stars like, yo, I can't even, even I, I remember Sonia Harold was there singing for the guys, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Okay, but not only us, because Pritia was a big operation, mm -hmm. there was six, six fighting groups, mm -hmm. uh, 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 battle groups, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, but in uh, any case, we, we drive back, uh, and as far as my knowledge, and, and I know other guys different from me, Julius Kratz was the, the convoy commander, mm -hmm. And, and because him and Jim Ross was going to go on to uh, uh, Special Forces selection, they, Jim Ross went to his vehicle, he, you know, he left his company with the 2IB, which is nothing funny because, I mean, you know, it's all in one convoy. But uh, obviously some vehicles broke down, the convoy stretched out. And then what happened is at... Buffalo Bays, they had obviously the mess open mm. and, you know, the bar open mm. and waiting, waiting, waiting. But I mean, it's a, it's a very uh, long travel. I mm. mean, it's from Rundu, it's, it's a, about 210 kilometers. And from Oshu Valley to Rundu, I, 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 I have to estimate it's about another uh, 300 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So in the end, you know, it really took very long for a military convoy to travel that distance. Mm -hmm. But in any case, what happened is 
uh, around the, where the Red River runs uh, into the Oka, Okavango. Uh, 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 I think the, the name of the place is called Derico, That's if I remember yes. it well. And uh, there, Julius Kratz fired a thousand foot flare to let the base know that the convoy really is close enough so that they can prepare better, you know, for hmm. the seven companies to return. Yes. Okay, obviously, a flare goes up, about every other platoon commander and whoever have flares, now they start shooting their flares, and then, and it ended up by people going into the base and now start shooting ammunition off, shooting over the river. It, it was a real circus. And ach, well, I, I mean, they even shoot right through my uh, vehicle, the paper cap, uh, past me and the driver. The poor kid starts crying because he said, is it a contact? I say, no, you know, it's just we are happy to come home, you know. Don't worry too much about it. If somebody is killed, we do have a sick pain that's <laughs> around here. It's not that bad, you know. But I mean, he really, he really was quite scared. Mm. In any case, but I calmed him down and get everybody to base and people were shooting like mad and uh, obviously another small mistake, all the better qualified officers, the higher ranks, went straight to the bar because it was a long operation and never seen a beer and a cold beer is always welcome to any soldier. So they run off to the bar and the rest of the people went wild with their ammunition. Mm shooting over the river and it ended up like the base commander Marnie uh, von Rainsburg ended up uh, uh, going down to the lines and being very agitated about this you know real battle because it was a battle I mean the first line ammunition just to give you an idea it's 300 rounds uh, are, 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 are AK rounds for a, for a, for a AK and then bombs and RPG sevens and sixty moles mm. and other small little gadgets that we always use and you know to fire that off from roughly about mm. six hundred and fifty seven hundred people mm. is a uh, is is a, is a bigger war than most of the people have seen in the bush mm. but in any case uh, then. Um, he went down there and he finds some of the people, uh, why did you shoot? No, well, we never shoot major. And then when he touches a rifle, his hand burnt mm. about, you know, skin off mm. because the rifle of the barrel is good. And other, why did you shoot? He says, because that's the only ammo I had, you know. And the, it's, uh, people are stupid, mm. you know, and, and they are young and they're full of adrenaline mm. and they are happy, you know. Mm. But, so really, it, it's, it's actually a shame. But it's a laugh as well, because nobody was wounded, nobody was killed, and uh, we, cleared the, we cleared the Mahango game reserve from all people who ever wanted to go and stay in there, because we just shot it just opposite the river. So never ever any of the uh, local population wanted to stay in that area. So yeah, we, we did take a pretty quite a favor in the case. Spending yeah, but it went well. Uh, luckily, you have the right commanding officers, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Ferreira, who, 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 who didn't put his... Uh, they wanted to blame the NCOs, you know, the corporals mm -hmm. and the things, but I just said to them, listen, people, this is not the way it works. Uh, a company commander is an officer, and uh, uh, listen, he's not supposed to leave uh, the company in charge of a corporal, so sorry, boys, mm -hmm. this time I'm going to make a noise, mm -hmm. and I'm going to fight for everybody around the base, we all make mistakes, let's take the punch all together and that's it. But then Julius Kratz and Jim Ross went on to selection and, you know, the, the colonel took the loss in ammunition as training. Okay. <laughs> so they got away very lightly. We got away very, mm -hmm. very lightly. Mm -hmm. And obviously my driver had a story to tell his parents. I'm sure. And yeah, the normal so, little things. So I was actually there at the time, so I just want to recite my part of the story. <clears throat> so all these senior officers and NCOs, you were the senior warrant officer in the base, because you yes, were the yes, sergeant yeah, yeah, major. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, you obviously were agitated by all this indiscipline and shooting first line, second line ammunition. 
and you uh, assembled us on the parade ground and you... Well, the next day... Yeah, tell us uh, about the next uh, day. The next day, and, and this sometimes, it, 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 this is where they announced that uh, and they, and they gave names of certain NCOs, like sergeants and corporals, that they're going to, you know, send them away mm. from future battalion and, and that. And then I, 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 I really lost it and I said to them, listen, you can take your beret, put it wherever you want to, the camouflage beret. I, I have a normal infantry green beret because you behave now less smart yeah. than a normal infantry. Mm. Uh, this is not the way to do it. I am definitely going to take this further. Mm -hmm. There is no argument about it. And then I told the officers straight in their faces, and that includes the base uh, 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 commander, uh, commander uh, Major Forenko. I said, no, Major, this time you also on the loop because you were in the bar when all the shooting started, mm -hmm. and that's not where you're supposed to be. You were supposed to receive people on the parade mm -hmm. ground. So sorry for you, mm -hmm. but we all go down, and not this mm -hmm. youngsters who mm -hmm. is just a bunch of patatas. Okay, thanks very much for having us here. My name is Kevin Fitzgerald. I served in future battalion in the reconnaissance group as a sergeant from late 1978 through to 1981. And one of the most colourful characters that one could ever come across in an absolute legend in the unit we are going to introduce to you now was Chris Crocodile. Chris's name comes from the fact that he had an incident with a crocodile on the Kavanga River at uh, Buffalo Base. So sit back and enjoy the legend that Chris Crocodile is. Well, you'll learn in this interview with Chris that Chris is a man of many skills and many stories and many experiences. And one of the stories is that it has come to our attention that not only was Chris a soldier of some repute, but apparently he is also a piano tuner of some repute. Uh, Chris, did you like this regale us with daddy's story? No, yeah, well, it's not the, the best part of my life. I, uh, I have the ability of uh, making myself sometimes to being a fool, but uh, the officer commanding, Echo Victor, his daughter was doing her uh, a, a, a music degree when she was still in Standard 9, and uh, there was only one piano in the, in the Kimbo, and obviously you know, the road to travel from Rundu to the piano to Buffalo and things. It's an old road and a, a dirt road. So the piano was not that well tuned anymore. And she said, but it's not really possible to practice my piano music on the thing. And her mother, and, and, and she talked to me and I said, but I can help you. But now I was, you know, actually pulling their leg, lying a little bit, but with a very straight face. And I said to uh, Ellen, the, the commanding officer's wife, I said to her, uh, Miss, but I, I, I know the blind old man that traveled around in, in, in South Africa at schools and, and you know, and he's, 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 uh, uh, you know, he's tuning the pianos. I said, oh, and then they know the name, you know. I didn't even know the old man's name, but I do know it was a blind man and always said, you know, the... Mm -hmm. the, 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 the the voice controls and things for the pianos. So I said, but I, I can help you, you know, if, if you know, you know, just the, the tones you want and then I can tune it. So, okay, that's fine. That, that's a good plan. No, no, now they're very happy, you know. So I went and get a spinner and the only spinner that I could get was a shifting, about that size, you know, a real a big shift. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they looked at me and they said, okay, so I, started opening at the back, you know, now, okay, look, a piano doesn't, you have to know music, now, I, I, my music is terrible, can't even play a radio, but in, in that case, you know, now, open at the back, and then I start, you know, tuning, and toink, 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 okay, that sounds right, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, you know, all of them runs in that yeah. seven chords, and now, looking at them, Toin, 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 and my spinner dropped into the, to the, to the piano in the back. Now I had to dismantle the piano <laughs> to get the spinner back out, so it ended up in a big circuit. But I must say, I'm proud of it. 
she made a she made a degree in in, in, in music. So yeah, well, it's fine. But it actually the magic, the magic. It, of course, it, it, it actually was a it actually was a mistake. I'll never do it again. <laughs> of course, apart from your refined skills of tuning pianos, uh, you actually are a, a soldier. So now I understand in uh, land just across from the Namibian border where we used to venture from time to time, you came across a little town called Mupa and had an adventure there. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, it was actually a uh, uh What happened it is, it, oh, it's, you know, at the right time, at the right place. Uh, there was uh, uh, battle groups coming up from the south. We went first, we walked okay, in. Sorry, could yes. inter interrupt? Just put dates in. Oh shit! I'm yeah. sorry. I no, can't. No, no, no. I just that. thought just the curtain. No, no, you know what? I, I can't. I'll give you the details. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. I mean, it was. It 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 was Tetchavite, 1983, December 1983. But what happened is we walked in and we were actually the stopper part of people uh, from getting clobbered in the south and then trying to go back to the north, you know, because we want to really stop the whole uh, advance or, or, or how can you mention it, you know, uh, the, the MPLA Swapu was, was building up in the south of Angola, which is just above the Namibian border, and that is where nobody wants them. The further north, the better for South Africa and Number so you actually program. wanted to create a large no man's We land. wanted to create yeah. a very big no man's land, very big, very big. And uh, what happened is that uh, they come in from the south and now we had companies with us. So, it, you know, it was not me, it was actually just the situation. And me and Eko Victor, uh, Colonel Edifian, was was in the mine already, uh, taking over that whole area there. With, uh, no, two question, uh, sorry to interrupt you. What what were they mining in that area? That There's an iron ore. It's an iron ore mine at, 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 they call it Point Delta, but it's, it's somewhat, that, 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 that's a very big dam there because all mines need a lot of water and things, and there's quite a lot of a build up of, of uh, local population uh, because, you know, uh, around mining towns, there's always a build up of, of, of labor. So yeah, there was quite a lot of people. But in any case, we cleaned that area up and anything. And uh, the previous time, you know, we, we took some some of their uh, uh, military equipment. We, we took it off their hands and used it against them. You know, so now we look more like a FAPLA base than a South African base. We are in camouflage. Our troops are black. They speak Portuguese and. Konyama and, and Imbundu and the, the local all languages. All yeah. So it was quite easy to fool the enemy because we are also in different uniforms in any case and uh, not looking like South African soldiers in the browns, you know, as it, of the time. But what happened then is that two lieutenants was running from the south a little bit faster than the rest of them. And they came so, so in and they, they led from the front. Yeah, right behind you. yeah, yeah, well, yeah, they, they, yeah, you differ a little bit to our system. But in any case, the problem was they were very hungry, very dehydrated, and, and you know, and not happy, and they wanted to report now to the first uh, own okay. forces so, base so, so, to say, yeah. So they weren't running away. There was just a strategic withdrawal. Well, you can say, you, you, you can, yeah, that's what they probably will call it, but I mean, obviously, we know they run off. And the companies caught them. And they said, there's two FAPLAS coming on the road. What must we do? So he says, okay, but let's try to catch them, capture them. You know, it, it will be so much better. They say, but, uh, say, I. Talk to them, talk them in. I mean, our troops can talk their language, talk them in. So start talking Portuguese, they talk fluent Portuguese, so it's fine. And uh, I said, okay, we've got them now. So yeah, but just keep, you know, most of your equipment. Right? Okay, it's AKs and everything, so there's nothing really different, yeah, except for our machines and things, you know, because we were a little bit better equipped than they are in the end. So they say, okay, that's fine. 
So, okay, bring him to the HQ. Now, it's only me and the colonel in the HQ. I mean, that was not a full HQ. It's only me and the colonel. So we sit in the mine shaft there with a big radio and a few rat packs and things. And they're rats because we also stole that from them. And they walked in and then said to the uh, lieutenant from, I think it was Bravo Company, I can't remember, and say, okay, you, you, you're excused, Lieutenant, sorry, you know, it's fine. You, now, we called them, didn't take their weapons off, didn't take their grenades, nothing, you know, they yeah, were still so dressed 100%. They're not suspicious of anything? No, suspicious. no, they were very happy to come and report whatever they have seen south. Probably okay. had on the rat packs as well. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, looking around, feeling happy. Uh, they could have picked it up on the radios, but you know, they don't that fly. In any case, and then they, they, we start talking, and then uh, because Echo Victor is not fluent in Portuguese, he said to me, but listen, talk to them, ask them, you know, uh, what, you now listen to the story, they tell us, you know, that there's big uh, rattles and machines chasing them in the south, and you know, the Russians already run off, and blah, 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 long stories, and so I said, okay, okay, that's fine, you know, and uh, what's, uh, he says, no, but we are very hungry. He says, okay, but that's not the problem, you know, here's some food, you know, some of their own food, because we took it off from their hands. And then Echo Victor said, but ask him who they think we are, because now I am not uh, 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 black-faced, you know, yeah. you see, there's no need for me, because I'm in the HK with a colonel, and neither is he camouflage. So he said, okay, uh, but what do you, who do you think he reported? He says, oh, Cubans, Cubans, we, we, you know, you, you, you're obviously Cuban commanders. And, uh, and Echo Victor goes, uh, uh, you know, and I say, no, and, and they say, Russians, Russians, Russian, Russian, <laughs> Russian commander. He says, Echo Victor, uh, uh, and, uh, and then they start, uh, and, ah, it's as if there's a light coming up. These Germans, now they, yeah, 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 yeah. that is the last, well, one. The, that's the last one, these Germans, say no, we, we the Boers, <laughs> we the South Africans, <laughs> and the one who turns to the other, he said, I told you something was wrong, <laughs> all in Polish, I told you something is wrong, he says, okay guys, sorry, take off all your equipment, leave it here, and I kept them there in the mine shaft for, you so know. Being the kind of guy, or you let them have the rat packs, so. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we feed them for two weeks, because now uh, the Brigadier of, of Sector 1-0, uh, Brigadier uh, uh, Hubert, uh, he, 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 he was even swearing at me for sending too many pe captures, you know, uh, people back to Namibia. There was no space in the, 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 yeah, 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 well, but no, he was really very pissed off with me for sending everybody that we caught down to the South F because they don't want them anymore. There's no need for more intelligence. Everybody knows what's going on. So, yeah, but that was actually a, a, a big a bit I think that's probably going to be the, one of the biggest reality check stories around. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, but, 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 but their faces, safety. but their faces, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so funny, you know, to, to, uh, actually it's, it's, it's not nice because, you know, if you think in a war situation, you know, you walk into an enemy camp yeah. uh, thinking it's your own and then in the end up, you well, know. Uh, what was until a few weeks oh, before? Oh, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, it was all there. Obviously, you know, it must have been a very, very, very bad shock for them, but uh, it ended up in a laugh because we never killed them, we never we mistreated them, we just gave them food and after the two weeks I said to Akio Victor, what do you want me to do with them? He says, listen, let them just go and then just go and says, okay, sorry, you know, we won't give you your stuff back, uh, sorry, that's keepsake, but uh, off you go. And, and you know, I, I still feel, and, 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 and many, a few people knows about it, you know, but when we, me and two soldiers went down and I took them out, it was not only them, there was more than them uh, captured, but uh, I took them out and I said, okay, you're free to go now, you can go, and they don't believe me, they think we're going to take them out to, to, to shoot them. Not to execute them. Yeah. yeah, and I said, no, uh, you can go, and then they walk reverse, you know, they reversed yeah, away they from them. us. And uh, I said, you can go, you know, go, go, let's go. go. So how, how, big the, how big was the group of being that you actually released? The, the uh, it's roughly about 14. 
and, 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 and yeah, I think that was civilians as well, but you know, it, it's because uh, uh, we didn't want them to to, to inform the well, other people you know, that had been in the, in the area. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the civilians obviously was never scared of us because we never, ever, ever mistreated civilians. Never, ever. But I'm, I'm talking now about the captured soldiers. Yes. And then I said to them, uh, listen, you can go. They reverse, reverse, reverse. And when they're about at 200 meters, they see, but listen, gunslinged. I told them, put it. And he says, reverse more, and at 400 meters they stopped and they say thank you very much, and then they run off like hell. Oh, yeah. So they gave you a typical African thank you greeting. Yeah, you know, well, 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 I would have done the same if I was in the situation, yeah. and they were the commanders. <laughs> so yeah, that's very normal. No, no, it, it, it's, it's something. Yeah, you know, it's you something. know, of course, I think that the common perception of uh, the SADF is a racist organisation is actually unfortunately overemphasised and it actually masked the reality of what the SADF as an organisation was. Um, you know, people choose to ignore reality to suit their own narrative. And the SADF uh, had in its ranks uh, units that were totally African, Indian, coloured. Many Indians served in the Navy. There were units where but we made up of black and white, ours was one of them, special forces was another. Um, and in fact, the SADF was a multicultural organisation. Yeah, from the start. Yeah. And, you know, stories like this hopefully will fight that narrative that we were um, treated people of, of colour in a demeaning way. If we didn't value their lives, we didn't value their... Uh, 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 them as people. You know, uh, I can understand that people that was never at the border or, or, or involved in the bush war will, 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 will reason like that. Uh, because they, they maybe, maybe within themselves they resistic or something. You know, it, it's something that never came up. My, my, my biggest friends were black soldiers that was my soldiers or even well, higher ranks than me. So they, it never came up to us. And, and in any case, come on, have a heart. You know, if you find a dog, do you kick the dog just because it's a dog? No. Exactly. You treat everything fair and square and normal and the way you want it to be treated, no. which is definitely not the case when they will capture you. Know, you. That I can promise you, you. you. You know, in many areas that we operated on, when people found out that we were South Africa, from South Africa, from South Africa I'm not talking about Shadow and Ghana. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about at much greater distances into Angola and other foreign countries. Yes, yes, on. yes. They flock towards us for help. Oh, you know, oh, we, right. we know, we help. know that. I mean, no. we gave more Angolans medical services than uh, than any other country in the in the even, world. We even flew them to Ondongo uh, and, and treated and them and for them. sicknesses yeah. that we can't cure yeah. in the field. No, no, ach, no, no. They, they knew you know that, what? Uh, it, it, they, they knew that the, things like that doesn't the even fact come. That, on. The, that yes, the Buddha represented it, uh, uh, you know, in their eyes, a racist system. No, uh, yeah. they you know what? Racism is uh, racism is so old, no. and you even find it amongst blacks. They have racism because what's the difference? Is, is, if if is, is is a Zulu a Tosa? No, it's a different race. Yeah. Yes, you can say what you want. You know, yeah. people make racism a color thing. This is not a color thing. This is no, the biggest the nonsense course, in the world. Of course it's not, course. And that's, that's the point. You know, once they became aware that the SAD was in the area, they knew we represented the help. They, they do. They do. And the color of our skin. They, the they, they do. We were there to stop an enemy that we thought were an enemy. And, and they were an enemy, obviously, because remember they lay landmines and things at civilian vehicles, at civilian roads. Exactly. I have been in situations where they stole school kids from schools, girls, took them back to soldier camps yeah. and made them concubines. Yeah, the, the abduction, the abduction out of Namibia into Angola is, doesn't receive the exposure that it should receive. No, no, because... But that we, was an ongoing problem. Yeah, our Joseph Goebbels was too stupid to use it. Mm -hmm. They did it. 
They know how uh, propaganda works. We didn't. We were just too dumb to, to make proper propaganda of yeah. everything. Because uh, you guys at, 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 uh, in the Testament Tent area for some time, we're now talking of the Scari, am, am I correct? Correct, that's correct. Yeah. So during a during time period here, you, the next unexpected visitors that you got to actually some tanks that were coming down from the north. Now, I heard the story from the person I'm going to mention now, uh, some years ago already, and I must tell you, it's one of the funniest stories, I think, regarding a hunk of metal that weighs about 20 or 30 tons, uh, and I won't give the game away about where this tank eventually ended up, but I believe you became involved because our commander, Eka Vicker, wouldn't believe we'd actually captured this tank and you were called into action. Yeah, what actually, actually happened, the tank wasn't really coming from the north, it was coming from the south as part of the uh -huh. runaway team. It wanted to took the Russians out, the Russian commanders uh -huh. out, because you know, you must understand that if a Russian is captured in wartime, then Russia is involved. I mean, a, a white Russian is a white Russian. So, End so, of story. so this is now another you know? strategic retort. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, no, listen, I, I understand it, Dan. We have big forces down there, six, six, uh, four, four or six uh, uh, battle groups. It, it was war. End of story, yeah. you know. But what happened is then the tank came in. Now, previously, me and Kevin Saido uh, uh, captured uh, uh, four Urals. Uh, named after the Euro Mountains in Russia, and and uh, and, uh, and okay, because I just want to explain to your audience quickly two things. Uh, Euros are big trucks. Yeah, yeah, but what, yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 it's, 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 it's a cannon puller, you know. And and they uh, each of the Euros had a, a twin barrel, uh, uh, twenty three millimeter uh, aircraft. Oh, okay. oh, bloody hell! This is dangerous shit. Uh, and 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 then. Uh, four gases with with fourteen five millimeter guns, two EVAs, wh which is a a, a, a Mercedes Benz, but because after the Second World War, you know, with East and West Germany, then Mercedes ended up in East Germany, and then they just continued with a and they just a, Rus a Russian version of, of you, uh, okay. yeah, Eva. Right. yeah, yeah, big big fat little tires, but, but, but actually beautiful. Mercedes. It's Mercedes, it's Mercedes, it's Mercedes. And, and then a, 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 a command, a command GPI, a very nice little GPI. I, I actually was very um, um, hard sore when I gave it to UNITA, but in any case, it doesn't make a difference. Now, uh, when said, but listen. Well, well, we know where it landed up in UNITA, don't we? Not no, in the no, battlefield, but in somebody's private vehicle. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, listen, UNITA was UNITA, so we don't really care what they did. They, they, all our, our, all our uh, uh, captured uh, uh, equipment, and material, equipment yeah. from, from, from the enemy was sent to UNITA, so it's, it's nothing because South Africa was not supposed to be in Angola. It was supposed to be UNITA doing all the things. But in any case, it doesn't make a difference. So with this 23 millimeter, we also could... Stop and then one of our small teams stopped the 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 the, the, the tank in the end. The tank ran into a tank ditch, and okay. and so it I couldn't get I, out. I would just like to explain to the audience once again what we mean by a small team. Okay, That's sorry, a reconnaissance team, a small team. You know, it's but maybe five a five man team. They they ended up because the tank is making a noise. It was down in the middle of the night, and any case. But then the Russians stole the the, the bridge block of the hundred millimeter gun because it's got a hundred millimeter gun. The the TM fifty four fifty five. Now this is new tanks. Uh, it's it's in the vicinity of about forty six tons, so it's a it's a, it's a, it's a it's a dangerous piece of equipment. It's the first one in the in the whole of Angola. Uh, all the previous ones. At the previous operation, like like uh, Prutia was all T T thirty fours, you know, old old. Uh, pre First World War, uh, Second World War. Yeah. Really? No, uh, no. Yeah, the T thirty fours were Second yeah. World War nonsense. Yeah. But remember, uh, 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 you, you must understand. You, you know, uh, Russia dumped 
a lot of old stuff in Angola until they see, okay, you know, the people is not that bad in, in any case. Let's give them more modern equipment. At, at the time, at the time, Kahama in the south was the best anti-aircraft defense system in the whole world. And the whole world, that includes Russia and America. It was one massive thing with Sam 8s, Sam 9s. If you call it the same, it was there. That was one massive, massive system. But in any case, forget uh, karma. And uh, what happened then, the tank was, was, was stopped. Okay, the Russians got off. They, they escaped, but they took the bridge block. Then the officer commanding says, but I don't believe the, the small team because they say they, they cut the Papa whiskey. He said, uh, we kept it a, a T-54-55 tank. And then the commander says, no, man, come on, that's impossible. You know, because now it's the first one uh, said, yeah, being seen, you know. Them. Yeah, we didn't uh, even know they had it there. And, uh, okay, in, in, intelligence said they, they, it's around, but, you know, oh, oh, is it true or is it not true? Uh, so I went down. Now I went down, get Papa Wesky, Peter Williams down there. Okay, we go to the tank. Now I said, listen, people, let's check it nicely because it could be booba trapped. So, okay, obviously I'm bomb disposed uh, uh, train, so just check it around. Okay, it's not booby trapped. They had to leave it in a hurry. So I climbed into the tank. Uh, Papa Wesky climbed with me into the tank. Now I said to him, please, Peter, don't, don't touch anything around here because it's all written in Russian. You know, three X's I know by now, it stands for reverse. But please, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Because I think, listen, it's a tank. Let me drive it back to our base. I mean, anything can drive, you know. I can drive anything, so what difference is it? So now, into the tank. Now, okay. check it. Chris, before you proceed any further, I just want to go back sure. a step. Yeah, you're welcome. Was the crew not at some stage, though the Russians themselves had vacated the tank, and, and obviously because they didn't want to become captured, but the crew was still in the tank when um, Peter first arrived. At, is that correct? They, they were no, still in, no? No, no, no. Otherwise, they would have been able to capture the people. And I'm telling you, if you had an opportunity to capture a Russian, uh, uh, well, you definitely... Okay, so both the crew as well as the Russian personnel... Yeah, 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 the Russians were gone, okay. gone, 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 gone. They, the time, they were, by the time yeah. you got there, the tank... Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the tank was this band, yeah, because they even took the bridge block. Okay, but now we ended up in the tank. Only me and him. The other people is all around, you know, to check. Oh, I mean, it still could be a trap. In any case, now start the tank. Now, Russian. I haven't had that as a second language on school, so you know, now you start checking around, well, how does it work? Okay, good plan. Follow the wiring system from the batteries and see, you know, where it ends up. Now it's done. And there's a red button. A red button. A red button. Peter Williams, a red button. Don't touch anything. Don't touch it, please. Don't touch anything. Let me work it out. <laughs> Believe it or not. He, he he was so he was so excited. Yeah. Excited, that's the word. He was really excited. He was so excited. <laughs> he pushed the red button. Unbelievable. This is a system that I didn't know existed at all. Immediately the tank locked. It locks. It locks the doors, the hatches, everything. It locks. Forget it. You'll never be open it. And it starts working with 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 with, with um, uh, 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 fire extinguish, uh, extinguishing system. Okay. You know, it it, it starts the fire, the fire extinguishing system. system. Fire I'm protection. telling you, it was unbelievable. We couldn't breathe, and we stuck for about half an hour in the closed tank. It was terrible. I was really. Pissed off with Peter Williams. But yeah, you know, in the end, it's only a good story for her. So, how did, how, did, how did that hydraulic lockdown actually release? Are you able to get it? You know what? On time, on time, uh, uh, time I, I believe, okay. I believe there's timers. Because uh, uh, 
it, it, it's, 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 it's actually, listen, the, 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 it's, like I say, it's the first TM 5455 tank that was captured. It's, it's much more, and I know it's 1983, but and it was built in 54, 57. 20 years old. Yeah, yeah, listen, it was a very, very advanced system. The, 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 the whole thing, it, it, it was actually fantastic. It's a fantastic tank. It's, it's more flat than our tank. We, in South Africa, I, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, we, we, build, we build bulky things because we big guys, we, we build big things. Sure. You don't need a big but, thing. But did you realize at the time, and I, I'm not familiar with this tank. I mean, yes. I only become familiar yes. through the Ukrainian war about the system that the Russians used. And they used the auto-loading system, which allowed them to have a low profile on the tank. So no, no. But all the it, ammo was down below. No, I'm just asking. Yes. So this is early, so I don't know that this existed at the time. But currently, we've been able to learn because of the media exposure and so on and so forth, that Russian tanks have developed an auto-loading system in order for the tank to have a low profile. Did the T-54 have an auto-loading system? Yes, yeah, no, uh, uh, no, it only started in the T-64. Okay. It's T-64, the T-74 had it and they stopped it immediately because it loaded a lot of Russian arms and not ammunition. It loaded the Russians' yeah, whole arm yeah. because they were just too slow. So, yeah, l l listen, uh, technology is fantastic, but I mean, first train people in technology before you give them technology. Okay. So, 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 so where, where was this, this tank ammo actually stored? No, 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 they have racks. They've got racks to the sides, to okay. the sides and to the bottom. No, there okay. was there, there was stacks of it. Uh, okay. A beautiful. So, I, so I didn't have a, an outside ammo. Uh, listen, listen, uh, uh, listen. They obviously could carry uh, uh, ammo on the, on the outside, but now you must also understand with a tank. You don't want to carry ammo outside because if anybody hits your tank on the outside, your own extra uh, uh, ammunition explodes. Yeah. So it's all inside, yeah. and then they have their external ammunition yeah. on a on a on a because support vehicle. What our tanks would have had, um, and I'm not an armored person. Okay? Yeah, the, well, it's called a blowback box. Yeah, so that's what I'm asking. Did the Russians have a blowback box on the tank? But no, they stored it internally in the turret area itself. They, the they, store the in, they store it. They store it internally. But even our our blowback box, uh, you must understand. Uh, I, I hear what you say about it. Our tanks and everything. All tanks. The ammunition is in the inside of the tank. Yes, it could be in compartments, but it's in the inside of the tank. It's not on the outside. Okay. Yeah. But but the T fifty four fifty five is a very nicely advanced tank. It's a very it's a light tank compared to the Abrams and the and the Markova and the and the Olifant tank that we use. But but to me, I I tell you, it's a very nice piece of equipment. And if you maintain it properly, they could have harmed they could have harmed South Africa much more by being a little bit more sufficient. That's all. They were just a bunch of potatoes. You, you know. Um of course, I'd like to pick up on that point because I think it's a very, very pertinent point as to why we, be, we were successful and they weren't. And I think it comes down to a lot of training. Sure. On the one hand. Sure. Sure. Training. Listen, training. Train hard, fight easy. I, I mean, we that, all know that. So and, 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 and in a, in a, in a, how can you say it? In a dangerous situation, in a fright situation, in a, in a the first thing that kicks in is experience. And experience comes from training, 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 more training. And they had the training. Believe me, believe me, believe me. Don't think. I'm telling you people think, ah, ah, ah you know, this is Africa. They were not well trained. They were 100% well trained. The, I think the biggest problem in Africa, and, and I'm sorry to have to say it, the biggest problem in Africa is their governments doesn't look after their soldiers. They don't give them their monthly pay. So their uh, 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 loyalty is, lo is, is, is loose. They, they don't have a proper loyalty to their governments. They are bloody dangerous fighters. Their bullets kill as much as our bullets kill. So there's no reason for anybody to think it was a walk over. There's no walk over in life. Walk over, walk over to your grave, yes, but not a walk over. That doesn't happen. And Swapu was the best trained 
soldiers that you could find anywhere in guerrilla warfare. And, and obviously, three quarters of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the of the Swapu soldiers in, in, in Angola was trained in, in, in East Germany or Russia. Yes, I'd, I'd just like to, to continue on that point. Some time ago, uh, on one of these African TV channels, they had a documentary uh, regarding the Soviet involvement in Angola in particular, but also Mozambique and other Soviet yeah, yeah. proxies, if you want to call them that. And one of their commanders made a very interesting observation, which, which uh, I, I think explained the difference very succinctly between a SWAPA soldier and an MPLA soldier. Now, you have touched upon this. This gentleman was saying, this officer was saying, that the SWAPA soldiers they came across, now remember, they were there at the invitation of the MPLA government. Correct. To assist the MPLA government, not necessarily SWAPA. So their primary focus was the MPLA forces, the MPLA government, SWAPA was secondary. But he was saying that SWAPA, you could spot the soldier SWAPA from a mile away because he had pride in himself. His boots were polished. His uniform he, yes. was much neater. Now it could be relative to the yes. MPLA. Okay? Yes, friends, but... It, we all have to understand something. Remember, Swapu is not an Angolan. Yes, they, they, okay, they what, number one. Yeah, now, if they it. took you over to, say, the Green Berets in America, everybody in America knows you're a South African. Are you going to perform poor? It's a question. Yes. Mm. You will not perform no. poor because the whole name of South Africa will be down the drain if you, only you, Fred performs poor. Yeah. So Swapo was in that uh, situation where they had to be better. They had to be. And as I said, Swapo was trained in East Germany and in Russia. The Angolans were trained no, not, in Angola. Not, not just in small numbers, in big numbers. No, in, in, in massive numbers. And remember, they had kind of a system like the 100... 100 men Wehrmacht of, of, of the pre-Second World War Germany. They were, they were confined to only 100,000 uh, Wehrmacht, but every single soldier was trained up to the level of a captain. I'm, I'm referring now to the, to the, to the, to the 100,000 man Wehrmacht. Yes. Was trained up to the level of a captain. He didn't have the rank of the captain because you can't have 100,000 captains or majors and things. But you have to have troops. But they were trained. So as soon as the Second War broke out, they, they had them all as instructors and, and, and commanders and things. Swapu did exactly the same. Swapu was, was trained at a much higher level and then they were supposed to come back to Namibia and then have their cannon for the troops. Yeah. Cannon fodder, troops, kill them, cannon fodder, you know, who, who's, who'll get killed first? The commander, shoot the commander and the platoon is weak, or whatever the yeah. case is. That's the idea of any warfare. We actually, we all have warfare wrong. I say just shoot the president and the country is poor. Yeah. <laughs> the leader group, yeah. shoot leader group, yeah. shoot the top and, and you have a weak bottom. Should the bottom, you haven't changed the top. Uh, if you understand, I mean, I'm, numbers, I'm talking it's war. It's I'm talking war here. Yeah. I'm talking it's got nothing to do with politics. It's, a, it's war. It's a number and influence game. Yes, okay. exactly. If you exterminate the major influences, your major decision makers, you achieve maximum effectiveness. Exactly. And that is a small number of people relative to yes, the top yes. of the triangle relative to the bottom yes. of the triangle. If you, are, if you are taking out in warfare terms, 10% of your bottom section of your triangle is insignificant. No, you have done nothing. But if you take out 90% of the apex of your triangle... Oh, no, you, then there is nothing. The country, yeah, then there is nothing. The yeah, okay. no. No, so so they, 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 I think in modern warfare now, they refer to that as a strategic strike. Yeah, and, sure, and sure. You, and you saw that when the Gulf War broke out. Yeah. The very first yeah. target was, was a, um, 
Saddam Hussein. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And the Americans had information that Saddam Hussein, in that particular night, was at a certain restaurant in Baghdad somewhere. That's correct. Yeah. And they actually targeted that restaurant with cruise missile. Yeah. But uh, no, okay, he, obviously he, 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 out, he yeah. left earlier yeah. than they yeah, 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 so yeah, that well. strike was called off. But you know, I think the other term they have is a decapitation. Even the devil, de even the devil have a protection to a protective <laughs> angel. Many <laughs> protected sometimes. <laughs> so you know, but that becomes a priority mission. Yes. Let's take out the leadership first. Yeah. Well. And yeah. Well. That, other, that's the best. Other thing they go for, of course, um, to demoralize the and make your the bottom yeah. ground troops ineffective for yeah. communication systems. I guess. So if the decapitation doesn't work, they immediately proceed to take out the communication systems. Exactly. Degrade uh, what you were referring to at Kahama. And actually, I'd like to ask you a question around Kahama, but just let me yeah. make this point first. So they take out all the radar stations, they take out as much anti-aircraft as they can, yeah. so they can get dominance in the skies and yeah. all these kind of things, because that once again means that your troops are not receiving air support or not receiving command. Exactly. And, and no that, food, no nothing. Yeah, they, well, as soon as you block that, no pay, yeah. no nothing, no soldier. Yeah. So they started to get mass desertion very, very early on in that initial war. In, I think it was 91 or somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, in, 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 in the desert war. Yeah. They used to get mass desertion because these people felt abandoned. And it was actually a created situation by the Allied forces. Yes. Because they targeted the installation so effectively. So the people on the front weren't really, in their eyes, were being deserted by their leadership. And then they started to, do, to desert en masse. Correct. If I can get back to Kohama, um, I, 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 in my time, which was a, a few years uh, before Ascari and um, then on to... Yes, 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 I Africa. understand. Kohama was considered in that part of Angola, uh, shallow southern Angola now. Yeah, very southern, very quite, southern, very close to the border. Yeah, they were quite far west, they weren't in a normal operational area. But Kohama was, had the reputation of being a very tough nut to crack. So. It was basically avoided by the SADF. We, we didn't have to venture past the west bank of the, of the Kuneni River because Swapa didn't really operate there. That was yeah, yeah, it was more it was more in okay. yeah. So I have been, I've done a couple of ambushes, vehicle ambushes. Sure, in sure, we all worked uh, in the areas, um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Jiva, what other... Uh, uh, the oh, oh, you, you, you refer to... Uh, um, where the tank was and we captured the town. Yeah, tank and the, the, where the bridge was blown. Um, uh, okay, we know. I'll, I'll get to it now. No, no, it wasn't sorry. Buried the Esh, um, no, it wasn't buried the Esh, but um, the town up from Onjiva on the banks of the Kuneni River. So between there and Kohama, we used to do a lot of vehicle ambushing. Yes. But we didn't go near the Kohama. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, we, no we never worked that far west yeah. on that level. Yeah. yeah. I think there might have been one or two special forces. Um, no, you, you know, uh, 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 Fritz, I can understand, understand it. Remember, remember, if you don't declare war on a country, you don't go all over the country. That's good. So, so people must also understand, we never declared war with Angola. Yeah. We wanted to stop Swapo. That, because Swapo was a, 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 a threat to South Africa. For us, yeah. listen, let's face it, it's political, uh, doesn't it? Yeah. I was a soldier, so I just did what they tell me to do, uh, or point me in a direction and I'll do what I want to do. You know, you, you can yeah. put it in your pipe and, pipe, pipe and smoke it as you yeah. like it, but you know, that's how life works. You know, they, they give you a job, you do the job as best as you can because that's your job. You yeah. get paid for it. And uh, we worked with trained soldiers and, and they worked with trained people. But as I said, we never were at war with Angola. Yeah. We only wanted to stop Swapu and then MPLA get involved and help Swapu and then it ended up in, listen, why you help that boy? Okay, a bloody nose will help you to think more about being a helpful and getting to, support to, to, to the future. Yeah. yeah. And 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 uh, Zangongo, I, I think Zangongo. you were referring to Zangongo. Yeah. Zangongo. You, you, you know what? Uh, there's a big reason 
why uh, we never really worked very hard in the west part and, and as you called now the Kama part because Kama is quite close to, to Sangongo. So to Sangongo on yeah. the other side. It's, it's quite close. Yeah, but I about 120 k No, I don't think it is that far, about that, 90. Right? Yeah, yeah, about 90, 80, 90. It's very close. Yeah. And it was a big, big, fantastic farming area for, for, for mangoes, uh, for oh, fruit really? and yeah. yeah well, uh, listen, Angola is a fantastic country. You know, it's always yeah. sad that there's a, a, a civil war in the country because it, it breaks the country. Uh, yeah. It's terrible. But in any case, uh, 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 I think the biggest reason was uh, uh, the, the amount of money that we would needed to spend on crossing the, the Kunene River. It's, to come in from the south, you had the, the Bains Mountains, the Zebra Berg, the Bains Mountains. <laughs> There's no, 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 no tank, no, no, no mobile forces could do it. You could only do, it, only do it with your feet. And as you can remember, in 1982, they had Operation Super there, where a lot of Swapu was killed there, and that actually put them as well off. Because they use what people must understand is a rich country have an easy supply of logistics. Poor countries, South Africa was included in a poor country because, I mean, if you supply logistics from Pretoria to northern Namibia, you know, it's a distance of three, three and a half thousand kilometers. I mean, that is a, this is a logistical line that doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't fit everybody. Uh, it's 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 very well, tough it, and it's it, unbelievable it, yeah, expensive. Wolf is that, that a very long logistical line, in fact. No, it's a, it's actually a no go yeah. logistical line. But okay, it so doesn't what make didn't a difference. have to contend with that made the logistical line less problematic for us. What we didn't have to contend with air raids into Namibia that could attack the, our logistical supply line. We actually were. Hey, no, 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 no. No, we had. That's why we had to add air fields like Tondango and things like that to keep their air down because no, they no, could but that, easily... That was in the north. What I'm talking about, uh, of course, is further south than that, around Bintuk and beyond. They could really attack us deeply. Yeah, but the... that's why I say, that's why we had good anti-aircraft at Ruakama and, and places like that to stop their air raids coming into our country and I must say, if they did their intelligence work better, they they could have done it. But I think their training was a little bit uh, That's what I'm saying. If lacking. They, 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 lacked on, they lacked on training. They lacked on training. They couldn't do night flying. They couldn't do real proper uh, things like that. So so they had to follow routes, you know, flying on the road, flying on the river, uh, you know. And our pilots were just a little bit better off. Why? Training and training and more training, yeah. but but ex a a a apart from that, the 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 thing is that, as I said before, you know, we never declared war to Angola, never, yeah. never ever, and 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 I and I wish never ever we, it will happen because I like the people. Angolans are a friendly bunch, as yes. as much yes. African countries, as yes. as much African countries, you know. Exactly. And you know what's really hard, hard sore, hard forsaken, hard terrible, is that uh, Africa will will not uh, will not really grow uh, uh, and, and get self sufficient because there's too many stakes uh, from say America, Europe, Russia, uh, China, India. It doesn't make a difference. You 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 can call on a more smaller countries, bigger countries. You know, and, and and they 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 always want the the what what what, what do we call it? You know, the the, the minerals and, and, and natural resources. The natural. Yeah. Thank you. That's that, that's good. They, they they all need the natural resources. You know, and 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 they compare for that, and they would like to keep Africa as poor as hell so that they can get it as cheap as the hell. Of course, there's a lot of truth to their statement. The Western countries, just to use the term... No, no, it's not Western, uh, in in other States. countries, yeah. Well, let's say advanced countries, sophisticated Yes, countries. it's okay. the first world it's Sophisticated um, manufacturing systems, economic sure, systems, sure, et cetera, sure. et cetera. They are resource-hungry and resource 
poor. Okay? Yeah. Africa is resort rich. rich. So it's another form of colonialism. They exploit that fact that Africa is poor. And keep them poor. Uh, yes. Uh, it's just another form of colonialism. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Colonialism. Yeah. So they, they strip them of the fish, they strip them of the wood, they strip them of the ground based natural resources, the various minerals that exist there, etc., etc. Um, and they do so in a manner that is, is, I agree with you, very, very exploitative, because they push them for the lowest possible prices and so on and so forth. You know. But I, I would like to veer back uh, to Kohama, if you don't mind. Yeah, you're welcome. Now, why is Ko why was Kohama so heavily defended? What made it okay, such Kahama? a valuable strategic okay. talk? Okay, okay. Ka okay. Kohama wasn't in the beginning that well, but you know, after Prutia, when we really, I, I, I tell you, uh, uh, Fritz, it, it was unbelievable the amount of equipment we got from the enemy, from Russia, because it's Russian and, 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 and Cuban equipment. It was never Angola's equipment. Uh, Angolans didn't have equipment. They, they, had the, they had the cannon for the, the troops, but, but they didn't have the equipment. We, we really took an unbelievable amount of ammunition, uh, uh, weaponry, uh, weaponry uh, 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 radios, uh, electronics, uh, let's name it. We, we really hurt them badly. And then they decided, listen, if we really want to hurt South Africa, start hurting their aircraft, because that they can't do deep flying into Angola and hurt us. So then they started building onto Kahama. And as I tell you, and it, it's, a, it's a fact, it's a fact, a fact. We only, you, you know, we talk about 1983 now, yeah, eh, sure. at Kahama, uh, uh, that Kahama was, I mean, the, the, the best, the best, the best after Second World War, the best anti-aircraft protected area in the world. Now, uh, 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 and, and I'm not t talking to a base, it's an area because yeah. you know it's an area. But now you must also understand that 1988, 87, 88, uh, yeah, uh, four and a half, five years later on the line, it was the first M8 system captured at, at, at Quito Carnaval. Uh, okay, at the Lomba, but uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a kind of old area, you know. It was about pit uh, for sale, eh? uh, it, it, At Model Rupert Packer, you know, the three operations in a row. Okay. But that was big. I mean, that was a war. That was a war. Never declared, but it was a war. I so mean, I don't care it, what who says. If I understand... It was a war. If I understand correctly, it was the first full-scale tank battles in Africa since the Second World War. Yeah, if, uh, uh, I, I don't think... The, in the Second... There yeah, wasn't one in the war. Second World War. Yes, there was up in Libya and Egypt. And uh, oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're 100% you're correct. I forget about the Desert Fox and Tobruk and other no, uh, no, 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 main, yeah, yeah. No, we right. focused on Southern yeah, Africa, but yeah, up in North yeah, Africa, yeah, 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 big thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know what? Uh, with the with the Modler Hooper and Packer, if you look at the amount of people died there, you know, uh, people can beat around the bush and sit back and so you, you know uh, 1500 unitas died uh, 7500 mpla died and and you know what it's people slaughtered and slain and and dead for what no we didn't. no intervention on that part so no no yeah, no but do you understand what in, i'm in saying inevitable question of any war whether whether it's deep into our history no, no, let's no, listen, no, listen, no, but, but there's question, sides to everything. No, but any question after any war, and you can go back to Roman times and beyond, the question yeah. inevitably comes up, was it worth it? The cost of human life, etc. No, never. No, that has to be the answer, it's never it, yeah. worth it. Yeah, but in yet, any case... Yet, politicians always seem to think that that is the most effective solution to any kind of problem is to go into armed conflict. Well, if you look at the overpopulation of the world, it's probably a good argument. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's, let's not 
Met de lid, 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 lidstuk de oude praten of historie. Ja, uh, Kahama, Kahama, Kahama was de ja, stop in South de, Africa. De, uh, niet de Rotterdam was daar de vader niet min. De imperial was daar de vader van de Rotterdam was Victor. En we lost a great number as well. Yeah, I see, I, I, I think 38 or something yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. South African. But then I must say we also cheated a little bit because there was uh, black Namibians and, 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 and some of our black troops that wasn't counted in the 68. But it, it's, it's not that. It, 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 the, the, the thing is, uh, you know what, F let's forget about casualties of war because um, as we say, you know, one human life uh, is, 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 is... One too much, yeah. It's one too many, yeah. Uh, but the point is, Kahama was created to stop the Air Force, not to stop us, because it was a, it was an aircraft, uh, anti-aircraft uh, So they uh, these sophisticated radar tracking systems. Yeah, oh, 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 with, all, with all the... Back, backed yeah, up by, yeah. by a very advanced stem. Uh, with the best technology in the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, America did not even have the exact intelligence of how the same eight worked. If it wasn't captured in, in my little attacker later on, uh, they would have still wished to know how it worked. Yes. No, it's very much. And you know, if you if you sit back today and you think, okay, you know, we walked we walked in a bush with a silver compass, you know, slide no, it open, like LBR, slide LBR, it open and LBR. smoke your pipe, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, just, I just want to explain to your audience that you're not talking about the metal silver, but about a make of compass that was very well used by us, the silver, S-I-L-V-A. Yeah, 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 it's a name, 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 it's just a name. You, any, any good outdoor shop, outdoor shop? No, every shop. Stock, silver, yeah, yeah, compass, yeah. No, stock every name. shop has a no. compass. So you could, uh, it was a make, but we, we had the silver, okay. But in any case, what I mean, if we had the opportunity of today's technology, but obviously they would offer, also had it, it would have been a different ball game probably. But that's not important. The important part of the whole thing was that that's what happened at the time, at the place, and we ended up French today. I mean, you can go visit Angola, it's a beautiful country. <laughs> Well, listen. They 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 also stuck their hands out to meet up with our with our generals and things at conferences. Yes, yes, yes. Conferences yeah, and, and, like and that. maybe yeah, we all and we are all friendly yeah, with yeah. each other today. So you know the animosities of the past, I think, have now been resolved. I agree. And uh, um, soldiers acknowledged each other for the fact yeah. that they were doing what they were asked to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. And you step up to the mark when your country asks yes, you yes, yes, yes. to, you know, step up to the mark. You, you yeah. do that. Yeah. And I think that um, acknowledgement by all the sides involved has led to mending of the bridges. And, uh, so, you know, I think um, we've got good relationships with those countries today uh, amongst the ex-forces. Uh, great respect. I mean, in our time, we had virtually everything that we could need. We had air cover, we had medical evacuation, we had good it, hospitals. It, it was... Uh, it, all of, all it, of these it, kind of things. It wasn't always like that. There no, was, no, there no, was just, times that... Yeah, but I just want to make, make the point here, because that that did not exist for Swapa. Swapa did not have that. They went to the bush with none of that stuff. Yet they went. I, 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 I beg to differ, and I'll tell you why. They, uh, listen, Imperial A was full of doctors. Uh, Swapo was trained very well. They had their medics amongst them. They had the medicine. They had good kid. Remember, they had good kid. I find beautiful kid from Swapo people that was shot. Okay, Lovely. Where, 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 where did you find this kid? Pardon? Where did you, where did, where did you come across this? Mopa? In Angola. Yeah, 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 sure. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm referencing cross-border activity for them. That's what I'm referring to, Chris. Yeah, but remember... So in Southwest Africa, they had nothing. No, they no. had all that. And I'll tell you, I'll tell no, you they why. couldn't send a chopper across wait, the wait, border. Wait, across. wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you, they had a whole population to carry it for them. It's Undercover, mm -hmm. in the end, into Southwest Africa, and, uh, and, and cash it. 
No, 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 uh, Fritz. They, listen, listen. Uh, I, 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 they worked their part very well. They were not poorly issued. They were not poorer than us. They were not less trained than us. They were better trained than most of us because they had opportunities that we never had. So, so, so to be honest, to be, to be honest, I say they were one of the most for, formidable enemy that we can even think of. No, no, that's, all, that's, all, that's, that's the point that I'm trying to make here. Ach, you can cut. We, we can always we, start from it again. Sorry, I just, I just want to yeah. finish off here. Okay, sorry. And that was the point that I'm trying to make here. That, yes, they were adversaries. But we didn't disrespect him. We had a lot of respect for him. No, man, it's, a, it's an enemy. An yeah. enemy, you respect your enemy, otherwise you're a dead soldier. But the impression was, and we touched on this earlier, the impression overseas of other countries. Yeah, well, I don't care what other, other countries what think. Saying, you know, the, the, problem yeah, was, but I our, the problem was, our Joseph Goebbels was useless. Theirs was smart. But the reason, why, the reason why I want to emphasize this point is that I want people to realize that we had great respect for our adversaries. You know? And you always have great no, respect no, for no, another no, man. I don't have an argument with that. You always have. You know? And as I say, they were well prepared, they were well trained, they were well equipped, they were good, and you respect everybody in yeah. life. Reinhard, um, I'm sitting here with, with Koos Kreer, Koos Krokodil. Now, Koos is a very famous and a very good sergeant major. Part of 32 Battalion, a legend, and he has so many stories to tell. And I would like to ask Koos today, Koos, you have tackled Buffalo in Buffalo, you have caught crocodiles, but I believe you've been to the South Pole as well. Did you tackle ice, or what did you do? Can you tell us a bit about your experience in the South Pole? Uh, you know, uh, and I, I, I did study a little bit, and I'm a meteorologist assistant, and not finished studying really properly, but in any case, I went to the South Pole. It's, it's also, uh, um, uh, what, how do you call it, uh, it's, it's voluntary, but I applied for the job, they gave it to me, I went to the South Pole in 1978 for the whole year, it was about 14 months, and uh, you know, it's a team of 16 people staying there for the whole winter, no support, no nothing, you take all your food, Everything, water, everything you take down, okay, water, no need, I lie now, but you, you take down uh, whatever you will need there, all scientific equipment, everything, because it's a, it's, a, it's a team of scientists. Now, I'm not a scientist, I'm just a team, part of the team. But the real scientist is normally people who study uh, ach, cosmic rays, uh, seismology, um, uh, there's, there's, there's so many fields, you know, and electronics and things like that. And then uh, they are normally master's degrees and, 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 and doctor's degree uh, students from the different universities in South Africa, whoever have their programs down at the South Pole. Now they call it the cradle of the wind, the South Pole, because it's very clear. Uh, there's no dust in the air because the whole place is under snow. So there's no dust at all. It's very clear. It's very beautiful. But don't think it's always clear because this, the snow can blow up and then you can't see in front of your eyes. They call it a whiteout. So yeah, I was there in the South Pole for 1979, came back in, eight, in, 1970, uh, in, in, in 1979 and uh, did some courses in the military again. And then I, they sent me back to the South Pole. And this time I was the leader of the expedition. Now I was very fortunate because in the time of the expedition, they had the, uh, 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 the Transglobe expedition where, the, where Sir Randall Fiennes, uh, Ren, 
you know, the third, the third part, the third part is his English part, is not ours. But in any case, where uh, Renfins wants to go as close to the zero line as possible from North Pole down to South Pole around the world. So he ended up, they ended up at the South Pole, they trying their very best, uh, you know, to do it and they get blocked, you know, because their sledges wasn't strong enough. Uh, people don't understand, you know, the temperatures dropped to minus 49, minus 50, minus. The coldest temperature was at Novolazarivskaya and it was, uh, uh, no, Vladivostok, and it was measured at, uh, at uh, minus 84.6, minus 84.6 centigrade. C. Yeah, centigrade, yeah. Wow. No, no, it's cold enough. No, mm. really. Mm. You, you, no, you don't need to freeze your beer. It is frozen. But in any case, so the normal thing is, you know, in the South Pole, then every student, you have to work your own program. Uh, normally, people work 54 to 60 hours a week to get his, uh, his, 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 his material up to standard because, as I say, they, 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 they into further studies and things like that. So if they slack, they fail, you know. So people are really working hard. But later on, when you're really used to this situation and everything, then it becomes easier and maybe 42 hours a week or something like that will also help you through. The difference or the, or the small thing in the part is that you have to cook. So each team member get a day of the week in a program and then he's the the cook of the day, you know, and, and, and now obviously not everybody is, is, a, is a good cook in life, but uh, you went to the University of Pretoria for a two-week cooking, baking bread course and making puddings and things and then the professors there decided, okay, you know, you won't starve, send you off to the South Pole. So it's actually quite stupid, but it worked. And in any case, and then Obviously, you take all your booze, all your drinks, for the whole year that you think you're going to need there, you took it with you down. As the, the, the leader group of the team, because I was the under leader, um, they, we planned, you know, on, okay, how many wine, how many times, how many parties are we going to have? Obviously, most of the people feel that it's a daily thing, but it doesn't work that way. It's not that easy. So, you know, you normally have midwinter, which is absolutely fantastic, because that's when the sun sets for three months and it never comes back again. It's, 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 it's dark for the three months. Uh, uh, there's electricity, so it's not uh, that, that dark, but it's dark. And then you normally see the southern lights. You've got the northern light, what they call uh, Aurora Borealis, and, and Aurora Australis, which is the southern light. You know, it's very beautiful. It's fantastic. It's really something. Now, the South Pole is the fifth biggest continent in the world. It's, 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 it's massive, you know. It's, it's fantastic. And we're on the Queen Maud ice shelf, which is an ice shelf uh, about 600 kilometers long and make it about... Uh, 180 kilometers wide, but it's a big, thick ice shelf uh, uh, attached to the mainland. And where it attached to the mainland, it, they, it forms a hinge area. They call it the hinge area. It's, it, but there is massive crevasses, uh, snow, snow uh, 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 cliffs and things. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's very, very dangerous. But because of the fact that the ice shelf is moving on the sea like that, you know, no, no, it's not like that. You don't even feel it. But it does move a little bit, and then the the the, the mainland is, is is you know stuck. It's 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 there. It's it's, it's but so that's where this this is, is very it's very dangerous. And we when we do our field trip going into the mainland, then we normally go as skis and, and uh, huskies, uh, huskies as, uh, as, as, as not dogs, uh, you know, and, and, and skidoos and, and, and muskets. It's, it's all uh, northern hemisphere equipment because we don't have snow in South Africa and bulldozers, you know, things like that. So then you go in and, okay, you know, try to get out of life again. It's very beautiful. It's fantastic. It's, a, it's, a, it's an unbelievable, beautiful country. Uh, 
but as I say, you can see far. Don't think you can go and ski there because the snow is not snow, it's ice. Uh, you fall your ass off quick, quick. Uh, uh, because, you know, it's not... It's, it's too soft for the for the for the ice skating and it's uh, snowshoes, you know, and it's too it's too hard for for snow skis. So it's it doesn't work that way. But in any case, what makes it unbelievable is that the uh, uh, nature, you know, in South Africa, we call it a mirage. You know, when you see the the difference in temperature of the earth and 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 the, and the, and the, and the atmosphere above Earth, you know, then call it looks like water or something. There it's just turned around. The, 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 the layer of air above the snow is much hotter and, and then it forms also a mirage. So it's not, it's not impossible to see 150 kilometers, uh, for instance, an iceberg, but it's 150 kilometers away. Now you know yourself normally. You can't see further, as, as a six foot person, you can't see further than, I, I actually forget, I think they called it 30 knots or, or, or somewhere miles. around there. Yeah, yeah, knots, it's a little bit further, it's about 17 miles. But in any case, you can't see further than that, even if you are on the ocean because of the bend of the earth. But in any case, and then in 1980, with, with, when I was team leader, I, I, I worked it different, you know. I, I, I don't like to, to, to force people to do things, you know. People must do it out of their own. But unfortunately, there is nicer days and worse days, you know. We have to, for instance, fill diesel into the machines. It's a hard job, you know. You, you're hauling 210-liter drums back to the base and put the diesel into the tanks and things like that. Now, I normally ask them, I say, okay, Tim, when are we going to do it? And if they say, okay, we're going to do it, uh, uh, let's check our program. Okay, Monday morning, 11 o'clock. I say, fine, then we do it Monday morning, 11 o'clock. And when Monday morning, 11 o'clock comes, I do not care if the wind is blowing at a 170 knots or if it's a bright blue clear day. We do it. Then they always say, but look at the weather. Then it's, uh, 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 uh. You decide it. I enforce it. This is, you know, this is most how... Very democratic. Uh, this is democratic. They always have to be somebody to enforce that part on the rest. they students. they smart people. They're very, very clever. Some of them can't even fill a, 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 a pen with ink. He, he looks like, you know, he, he was in an in a ink pot himself. But up here, you don't even try to argue with them. Don't even try. They are very, very clever. But I sometimes they are not very practical. But in any case, with this Transglobe expedition, then um, they came back to me and said, "Please, man, can can you assist that we can continue to finish the trip around the world?" says, yeah, sure, you know, what can we do for you? Okay, this, that, that, that. So we have them with a, with, a, with a sledge and everything. And they did finish it. And then they just rock up there one day with a twin otter. It's a, it's a nice, small Canadian aircraft. It looks like a small C-160. And parked there and says, listen, we like to return favors. What do you want? I says, want, want, what do you want from what? He says, okay. You can pick where do you want to fly to. Because the Antarctic Treaty says any country can visit any country without even saying I'm coming. You don't have to say no. Now this is 1980. The Olympic Games was in Russia and the Americans uh, uh, boycotted it. They didn't go that year. Okay, but then now Igor Antonovich Karganovsky, he was the leader of the Russian team, uh, then, and in any case, but I'll come back to Igor. Then uh, I said, okay, um, you know, everybody goes to Amundsen Squad Base. What's so smart about that? I said, I want to visit Vostok, the Russian base. They said, what? Say, Novo Lazarevskaya, we come. Then I visited Novo Lazarevskaya. Only me, the pilot, the co pilot, uh, Anto Berberg, and me. Okay. Now we fly over to Novo Lazarevskaya, stop there, 
they they cleared the piece on a 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 on the ice with a bulldozer, you know, to make it nice and flat because they landed with skis. So there, without telling them we are coming, here comes a big man. You know, all of us long hair, long beards, because who who do you say for? You know, there's no need for that. So okay, fine. Now now what happened? Everybody in my team said. Can you take photos for me? Can you take photos? Because this is a once in a million, you know. Can you take photos? Yeah, any time. Now I look like, I do not know. I, I mean, no, nobody in the press will have so many cameras, but I've got all these cameras and things. <laughs> Let me tell you, this was the biggest mistake of my life, to take all that equipment. I couldn't even look after them. But in any case, <laughs> so ended up there and then, here comes this big guy, but it's a big, it's, it's a real, it's a, it's a big Russian. Comes out, blah, 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 Russian, okay, ooh, ooh, nobody speaks Russian, you know? Okay. Said, South Africa. Because they say England, and he doesn't understand it at all. You know, he's a, he's a normal, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a contractor worker, a bulldozer driver, he, he, he's, He's there for his job. He's not interested in our story. Okay. So then I say South Africa. Then he says, South Africa. Then he says, Maputo, because I know their ship goes from Maputo to. He says, Wow, oh, now he's very. Uh, Beer rock. Take us back to his hut. Unbelievable. Stalichnaya vodka. Meat. Throw it in a glass. As good as we drinking beer, and there we sit. The pilot was smart. He said from the start, I can't drink, I'm, fr I'm the pilot, you know. The co-pilot says, yeah, well, I can either drink, I also have an important job, so all the drinking comes to me. <laughs> I say, okay, you know, I brought you a bottle of wine. And you are not a scared person. No, no, I'm a stupid one, because I, 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 I didn't know that their vodka is about 96% proof. <laughs> it's, 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 it's terrible. So, okay, obviously, start drinking there, now waiting for the main team. Now he lets the main team on the radio know that, listen, we visitors there, we're coming. Okay, here comes Igor, uh, 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 Igor Antonovich, the, the, the leader of their team. Now, he's a professor in, 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 in physics, and he is, uh, I think he was four times at the North Pole, and it was his third stunt at the South Pole. They, no, no, he's from St. Petersburg University. At that time, it was a still called Leningrad. But in any case, okay, fine. Ended up there. Luckily, there was East Germans because it's it's it's, it's Russian DDR, Democratic uh, uh, Deutschland, you know, the Republic of Deutschland. So okay, fine. Now, could speak through Anton Bebek, who could speak German. All right, fine. Start drinking. Now I'm the leader of the team, so immediately Igor took me under his arm. Short guy, go in. Everybody gets waked up in their team. They were they were a strong team, about 38, 40, uh, not small like us. In any case, and then now, the chefs prepare a meal. Then, a long table out. Everybody gets a chair in front of me. Bottle of Stalich, now I have vodka. Now I see trouble coming because already. I don't feel the cold as much as I'm supposed to feeling the cold. Okay, Stalich, now what in front of me? Okay, start talking through this, through this, you know that. Then everybody drinks the vodka. Now, now again, a goblet, a brandy goblet full of Stalich, now vodka need. There's no need for ice because it's cold enough. And a glass of wine tall beer glass full of wine. This is chasing drunkness. So what happened is now every time I take a small slip, sip, just small, I, I, I'm wetting my lips because I see trouble. I can see trouble. Big chef behind me, over my shoulder, top it up, stand back. Very nice. Look, 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 they look after me as if I'm a VIP. Fine. Now we start drinking. 
like, you know, now we start becoming happy. Now, me and Igor do doesn't need any translators anymore. <laughs> now I speak my way and Igor speaks his way and we are fluently understand each other. There's no problem at all. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. The bush helps a lot sometimes. I never took one picture that I, not one, I was too drunk, in any case. In the end, the aircraft, now we have to go back, you know, everything is fine. Oh, oh Igor even give me a, 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 you know, the Olympic, uh, they let a little beer uh, made, you know, for the Olympics. He even gave me one and, and blah, blah, blah. Then, but we were very drunk, me and Igor. Now, out in the snow on the way to the aircraft, decided... Igor, can you dance like the Cossacks, you know? Now, wh why nonsense like that gets into your head? I, don't ask me why it happens, but you know, people just start thinking like that. And that was me. Hey, Igor, can you dance like a Cossack? Why do you Cossack? Oh, Igor, Igor, but Igor knows Cossacks because Igor is a Russian. Okay, now, me and Igor dance in the snow like Cossacks, you know, they're sitting and kicking and nonsense and stuff. Okay, now Igor starts crying. Because his friend, his new friend now is going, we're going to part. And you, you, believe it or not, it's so freezing cold that the tears, ice, you know, running down your eyes. Now I helped Igor into the aircraft. The aircraft is running, the engines, they want to go, you know, things is on time. I help Igor into the aircraft and now I also feel very sad because Igor is leaving me. And then the pilot stopped the aircraft again and he comes back and says, please, please, you come with us. Igor stays here. He said, when I get back to the base, everybody wanted to kill me because there's not one photo to take and not one, not even for my own camera. That was a terrible time. No, I'm telling you, the, the South Pole. But the South Pole is fantastic. We lost a guy that year in the crevasses going to the main, not, not in my stunt, uh, we, we made teams because you can't leave the base completely alone, so we made it in two halves, you know, this half, and then you work really work your ass off, because, I mean, then there's only half a team in the base, and then they, they work, then they work hard, because now you have to do somebody else's work as well, while he's on a field trip, and uh, they fell into a crevasse, uh, and, and the guy just walked around the door of the, of the muskeg, and he, he fell 100 meters and he was dead, you know, a jet bell. Very, very sad, obviously. Uh, so they radioed me. I was back in the base at that stage. And then I said, OK, now I have to go and rescue somebody or rescue them or do, make a plan. You know, because this is now a little bit too far from Pretoria. They can't make a plan because they can't get there. It's impossible. We snowed in, you know, the, the, the sea is frozen for a thousand kilometers. So the, no ship can get there. And the cost in any case is too high to get a real icebreaker because our ship is only partly icebreaker. Then I took a D4 Caterpillar for three and a half days. I drive the 120 kilometers to get to them. Then I fell in a, in, a, in a crevasse, but only a smaller one. So I couldn't go further with the caterpillar. So I took a skidoo, that's a snow motorbike. Take a long pole, tie it to me and said, OK, you know, now if I fall, I must just drive very fast. And if I fall in, you know, then, sorry, then they then it's somebody else's problem because then I'm dead. So what difference does it make? So off fast, 75 miles an hour on the snow. And I must say it's quite scary because if you look backwards, you know, even in that, you look backwards and then you see there's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole. And then you say, please Lord help me, you know, we're really in trouble here. Then I ended up, and, and the guys was really very, very, very scared. They didn't want to move. I had to walk, find a path, get back, drive the snow tractors back. And later on, we all start working and get them out. So it was quite sad in any case. But yeah, no, 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 the South Pole, it, it's fantastic to see the place. It, it's, it's unbelievable. Even the trip down there is fantastic. Wes, 
it's most interesting. I mean, it's only a few people in the world that get the opportunity to do that. Yeah, no, no, I'm lucky. I'm lucky from that. So, but... I, I was thinking, you know, what is the difference other than a number between minus 51 and minus 61? Can you feel it? Can you yeah. judge? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the time you span, know? the yeah. time span before you you get frostbite, nose, ears, finger pin, yeah. fingertips, everything. Dressed, dressed, and not dressed. Yeah. The, the time span is just faster at min minus sixty than at minus. Okay, we our coldest temperature that we had down there was minus forty nine point seven. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, at Sanai, at, at at Sanai stands for South yeah. African National Antarctic Expedition, and then the number behind it is the number of times that it have been there, like nineteen, twenty, twenty one, yeah. whatever. So yeah. you can really pick it up, it's dropping lower than... No, you normally, you know, when you work with people and you say, then you just say, cover your ear, or go back to base, your nose is frozen. And then you, you yourself don't pick it up easily. Yeah, in, in the beginning, okay, it's cold, you know, but, but the cold is fine. The worst thing is all your blood vessels burst burst but now it's frozen and it's it's white it's white 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 like snow and and then when you go back and now okay you, you, you normally take your gloves off and you hold it around your ear or you blow into your nose you know and then it it, it it comes back and and then it starts swelling it is unbelievably sore i'm telling you it is it's as good as a burn a, a burn on a on a, on a stove plate it's, wow. it's, it's as good as a bun. Yeah. Was, we also had a street there. That was quite a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, because at the coldest day, then you say, okay, let's run 100 meters. Now, the previous teams, and I believe the teams after us also cheat. I believe they still cheat because they will run with their shoes. I said, no, 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 no. Barefoot, like, like this. No clothes, no nothing on, like this. Like this. Then you run from the main base to the snow hut, which is, uh, snow hut, which is uh, exactly 100 meters. And then the doctor sits in the snow hut. He sits there, or the weather hut. He sits there, and then what he does is sit there with lukewarm water, not hot water. It's, it's impossible. You, you'll burn somebody. Look, look, very look. I, I'm telling you room temperature water. He sits there with that, and as soon as you get there, you know, then you dump yourself your feet in and whatever else. Becoming a little bit frozen. Wow, no, that's very. Oh, but it's all fun. Or you, you know, just to be smart or funny or silly or an idiot because people are born idiots. All of us, all people are born idiots. Is you, you take a saw and then you saw a hole in the in the frozen sea ice and then you dip yourself in just to say I was also swimming at the South Pole. You know, it's it's ridiculous. It's completely madness, but it's lekker. Yeah, you have to do it. If you don't do it, why, why did you, you go there? You missed an opportunity. Why did you go there? Exactly. Because did they ever recover the body of the guy that dropped into that? Yeah, hole? yeah, no, no, did no. They? No, we did. And because of the fact that it's frozen, you know, you just wrap him in blankets and put him on a sledge and go back. It's but, but frozen. The, Going down uh, ropes, ropes, ropes and, and, and like abseiling. Uh, 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 it's like abseiling a thing, and and also a uh, little little steel uh, cable leaders. You know, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, look, we have the equipment. It's just we don't want to die. That's all. Yes, of course. That's very very interesting. I want to ask you, having the experience in the South Pole, bush experience in wild Africa. What was the peak moments, the wachtepunte in your life? What would you... I, I hear what you say. Uh, Can you name a few? France, yeah, no, France, everybody have moments that they like more than other ones, you know? Like, uh, ach, capturing the two uh, MPLAs and, 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 and find the first... T-54-55 tanks. My, my actually, 
my, my really most proud moment I can say was with Modeler, Hooper and Packer, the biggest, the biggest bush, the biggest conventional war in southern part of Africa since the Second World War, in any case, well, ever, ever, ever in southern part of Africa, because there was lots of force and things, was I was uh, uh, pulled from being, you know, a soldier uh, back to, to run logistics for the group. Now, it sounds like, oh, okay, you know, make sure they eat and get their red packs and see. It's, it's not that easy. What happened is that I have a convoy of 74 uh, 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 12-ton trucks, uh, Quefors, you know, the, the armored Samo 100 uh, 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 mine-protected vehicles. And uh, that was for the supply, and then I had, I had 19 some 100 bunkers, which is also uh, armored uh, prepared, uh, or anti-mine uh, 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 anti prepared vehicles, uh, uh, with, with, with uh, 10,000 liter bunkers on the back to supply the tank regiment. Because remember, 12 tanks, it's normally 14 tanks, but you know, that means an extra tank, and what, 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 there was 12 tanks there. So, uh, you know, uh, the amount of diesel they burn is unbelievable. And then I had a, 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 a G5 battery, that's eight, eight G5 cannons. I had the two Renosters, the two G6s there to supply. Uh, I, I'm not referring to even all the people. I had the battery of, 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 uh, of Valkyries. No, yeah, Valkyries, yeah, the, 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 the Samuel, the, 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 the Unimog. Uh, 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 120 millimeter mortar, uh, 127 millimeter rockets. mortar uh, uh, rocket launchers, and uh, and and then a, a battery of anti-aircraft. Uh, it's uh, it's also uh, uh, some of twenties with uh, with 20, 20, 23 millimeter uh, anti-aircraft guns on the back, and then uh, the whole six one Mac. Forsai uh, and three companies of three two battalion uh, parts of three one battalion. Uh, 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 it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big force, and at a certain stage the operation was really escalating because you know it was a, a conventional warfare. Then they flown uh, uh, Falcon Dion Ferreira. They flown him in and says, listen, Dion, because he was on, 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 on a joint stuff course, you know. This is where him and his wife have to a course because now they is yet marked for general, you know. So now they also qualify your wife and see if she's, you know, stock for general stock, you know, like good enough to, to be uh, in, a high, in a high circles. And uh, Dion Ferreira flown in. Now... Seven Division Sergeant Major was there, uh, Anderson, uh, uh, Chris Moorcroft, five reconnaissance, Chris Lutz, four reconnaissance, uh, 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 all the Corps Sergeant Majors, that's the Armour Corps, the Infantry Corps, blah, 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 and, and Group Sergeant Majors and everything, all, I'm, I'm a W2. Yeah, well, it was my rank for a few years, in any case. And then Dion Ferreira said, OK, people, this is uh, Colonel Luisberg. He's my uh, uh, artillery uh, advisor. This is Colonel this, this is Colonel that, you know, because they are all also full colonels. He's a full colonel, but they are all full colonels. But OK, he's the officer commanding of the fight, but he has to have advisors. And then he says, OK, people, and now I'm going to do something that is definitely not military correct. But uh, I do know why I do it, and I expect you to understand it. I says, you have, uh, and he talks specifically now to the sergeant major, says, you have to respect it, uh, and I know he will respect you. And he says, my um, uh, brigade base sergeant major will be sergeant major Kuskia, stand up. And I stand up, and I was I was uh, giving a job above all that very high, you know. And, and that makes you feel a little bit proud because I know Dion Ferrer at a at a, at a real 
uh, he, he had a lot of trust in me. And I worked very hard, uh, you know, to, to make him feeling good. Because, I mean, after all, you know, you can't fail if somebody gives you a smart job. And now you're an idiot in the end. But yeah, yeah, it was very nice. And then I ended up, you know, when, when they called me, they, they called me forward and they says, OK, you know, uh, they need, at, at Robbie Hartley, they, they need a sergeant major there. And I said to him, I said, no, 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 no listen, they've got W.O. ones and things. It's out of the question. Now I'm going to the front. End of story. So then I went and go do reconnaissance on Quito Carnival itself. That was very nice. That, 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 I like that more because that's my line of job, you know. So then I, a real foot soldier, went into the bush, small team, go check up, bring, uh, being a forward air controller, you know, bring in strikes for the G5s and the, and the rockies and the things. So it was very nice. Yeah, of course. Um, I also do know General, or that time Colonel uh, Tion Ferrara. Yeah. A uh, very astute person, very clever person, a strategic thinker. And I got to know him as he would handpick the people he trust. Yeah, you know, so I, I was he just... definitely knew what he had in you. And I think it's a brilliant choice because I know you as well. As a person you can trust and make things happen. Ach, thank you for Hence you know. your position as a leader in, an, in, in the South Pole. Because you've got that leader ability, the ability to plan strategically and logistically support and make things work. And yeah. make people laugh. Yeah, I just want to say, I don't think I'm that smart. <laughs> but uh, I true. enjoyed my job and I worked hard. And, and that's it, you know, I, I was lucky enough, I met uh, Minister Pek Boerda. I even had a terrible uh, uh, incident. Uh, uh, the Prime Minister at the time, uh, P.W. Boerda was visiting, now he's, he was wearing glasses. Now I had to go and collect him, night time, because I can only fly in at night, because we're always scared of the Victor Victors, you know, the, the, the enemy aircraft. and. Uh, I only had a Quefel, 12 ton truck. Now, okay, obviously he can't sit in front with the driver because then the driver messed up. So I'm sitting in front. So he gets on the back. Now, how do you get old people, and you know, old people, I'm also old today, but how do you get old people on the back of a bloody truck who's, who's, who's absolutely high when it's about, and it's about the how high is it about? It's about four and a half, it's about a meter and a half plus, an alpha, just to get up there. And oh, oh, in any case, it doesn't make a difference, he's a president or just a poor old uncle, but he's, he's old. And, and, and so he's part of his, 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 his people that he brought with him. So then I built a, 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 a little leather out of wood, you know, and tie it with, with, with bark, because where do you get rope? This is not a, 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 a mountaineering expedition. So get him on the back. And believe it or not, that's why I say, men can make stupid mistakes. When I said, OK, we arrived here now, everything is fine, uh, please, Mr. But you can get off now. He doesn't turn around and climb backwards like normally off a ladder. He climbs off forward and he falls. And I, I want to grab him and I give him a club against his head, you know, and his, his glasses fall off. Now I shout, stop, stop, because otherwise everybody is going to, to, to step on his glasses there in the middle of nowhere in the sand, and then, you know, if he can't see, then it will be worse than anything else. It was absolutely a circus. But in any case, the old man never blamed me for that, you know. He was happy that I caught him and he didn't fell on his face in any case. But yeah, when they visited and Falcon gave them the real briefing and everything, and they went back and happy. Uh, 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 another Another idiot situation is now they sent the ministers in, but now they came in at night time and they need a little bit longer to discuss the operation and how long must it go on. And in the meantime, Minister Buerta 
Pagbueta is busy with, you know, talking with the Cubans and the Russians and the rest of and, uh, and, and Chester Crocker from America and everybody, you know, to see that can we get out of the thing or have to carry on, you know what? Then they came in, they, they, okay, now we know there's enemy aircraft and they have uh, BM-21 and, 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 uh, and Monica Sheetas, you know, they can, they can also arm us. So now we, we dig for them foxholes, you know. And then I saw uh, Minister Baron de Plessis was the Minister of, 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 of Finance. Then I decided, okay, this is a smart plan. I have a smart plan. Now I, I dig three foxholes for him. One is only this deep. And I said, 5% increase on salaries. That's where the board did. 5%. And then I dig another one. Not too far from it, a little bit deeper, and I say eight percent, you know, because they always work most between five and ten. You know? And then I went and I did the proper one, like all the others, and I says, okay, this is a twelve, but this is a ten percent one. And then they came, and then the uh, Falcon says to me, oh, no, no, Ekovic, it was Ekovic at the time. Then he says to me, okay, of course you take the people and, and, and go show them if anything happens where they must be and what. And I took them. Now they come in here, and everybody, oh, okay, you know, and how do you do it? And now already I, I gave a demonstration with one of the troops, say, you know, get in there and show them how to be inside the hole when, when, when we shout dictavit or whatever. Okay, now fine. Then uh, uh, when we get to, to his part, because now it's a little group walking with me all the time, then he says, Minister uh, Duplessis, this is for you. Your 5% one? You must decide yourself, your 7% one or your 10% one. You make your decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he, he, he thought it was funny, so it was okay. So, so they yeah. did see it as a Oh, as yeah. A joke. Yeah. oh yeah, because yeah. I mean, I had a proper one for yeah. him, it's just yeah. a, about it. Oh, no, they, 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 they clever people, you know, yeah. they also, why, why, no need to cry in the bush. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I had. A, I. I good experiences, so I can't complain at all. No, that's wonderful. Was in a very short summary your highest point of disappointment and your highest point of satisfaction in a minute. Well, I don't need a minute. I need two seconds. Go for it. Failure is your worst, and, 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 and success is your highest, no matter in what you are doing, either on a course, or in the bush, or in civilian life, or all over. If you fail something that you wanted to, uh, to, 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 to a claim or whatever, and you, you fail, you know, it's obviously a disappointment. Sometimes the problem is, you know, in the military situation, you, 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 you work with people, and you work with, as I told you now, four sides, you know, that, that's a lot of people, six sides. There's so many people, so many things can go wrong. You know, it's, uh, and you work with higher ranks and with lower ranks. I mean, as I just told to you, you know, I, I met Minister, the, the, the Prime Minister in the bush, you know, you work with people like that. I mean, obviously it, it feels good to say, I have, I mean, there, there must be quite a lot of pictures in the archives where, you know, a minister stands next to me and around the shoulders and say to the general's photographer, take a picture, you know, and things like that. Now, I don't know, you know, I mean, I'm not a picture man because I know myself, I'm not a, a photogenic person, so he doesn't care about that. <laughs> but in any case, you, you know, so it's so only near France, you know, I, 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 I made mistakes and I, and I made excellent choices as well, so I can't complain, you know. I was lucky enough as a paratrooper later on when they closed three to battalion and, and I said to people and they, they, I know they bite 
they feel like they're biting a bullet, but it's not the truth. You know, the biggest favor ever that happened to one reconnaissance, 3-2 battalion, 3-1 battalion in Kufut, is that they closed us before 1994. Yes. It was the biggest, biggest, biggest favor they could do at all to our, our soldiers had 17 years of bush war experience. And the same goes for one reconnaissance. I mean, it's your, it's your pride. Huh? They give your pride to the dogs. I don't mind being killed by a lion, but I'll feel very, very shit if a, if a puppy kills me. Yes. <laughs> Was very true. Thank you very much for entertaining us with your experiences and sharing your life experience. And I mentioned to you the other day that you are a stimulus to the soldiers that know you. We are aware of your capabilities, your humor your intelligence and I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Being uh, a role model for officers and NCOs alike. Thank so you. So thank you very, very much, Chris. Thank we you. We really appreciate. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your wonderful stories. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Good afternoon and we're back with uh, Chris Trio. Afternoon. Please. And um, you were an NCO and a warrant officer for many years within 3-2 and you obviously have intricate knowledge about the traditions of 3-2 battalion. I believe so. Good. So the question I wanted to pose to you today is what is your opinion on the support elements of 3-2? Because later on during the war we had many different support elements. Yeah, very true. Mm. And um, what is your opinion now of them wearing the camouflage beret? The, the, the thing is, is not what's my opinion, the thing is what does Herald is correct. Heraldic mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. This is the, the point that mm -hmm. must be... And then obviously the highest uh, 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 voice into it is obviously the, 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 the founder, commander, like Colonel J.D. Breitenbach. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if he had made a rule, then the, it, it's, it's, it's really... In, no, not in the power of anybody to change it. Mm -hmm. and, and his rule is the following, that if you serviced in 3D battalion for a period longer than three months, and now, Peter, if you can remember, even the guys came coming from infantry school, and even if you have passed, and, and that was originally like that, even if you have passed your selection there, you didn't get a, a camouflage parade okay. immediately. You had to... You had to be in the unit for three months mm. before you would get the opportunity to wear a camouflage. But I, obviously with your, uh, uh, what's that they call the bulky or what? what the bulky. They, they, they call it the bulky. It's actually called it's a bar. A bar. That's, thank you, man. Yeah, in Afrikaans, a bar. Mm. And then you wear your bar, your bar and your and your badge. Mm. You know, and in Sijim and Dalin, it's a buffalo, you know, pretty, mm. pretty, pretty. The point is, Colonel Breitbach decided not only on that, he also, he also had it from the military heraldic. He said, mm. no, if somebody served in the unit for three months, mm. then he is entitled to wear the camouflage beret. If he was in the armor corps, he wears an armor bar, mm -hmm. but with the buffalo. Mm -hmm. If he's in the medics, he wears a medical bar. Mm -hmm. If he's in the signalers, he wears a signaler bar. Mm -hmm. And if he's in the logistics, he wears a logistic bar. Mm -hmm. This is the rule, and nobody, nobody can change the rules. Mm -hmm. I mean, a rule is a rule. Mm -hmm. And even Colonel Breitenbach never changed the rules. He, he just said that, listen, it's my unit. I started it. I'm the founder member, the founder member, the founder, the real founder of the unit. You know what people do not understand is that Colonel Breitenbach thinked this out all by himself. He didn't have big teams and people sitting around. Mm -hmm. He gets to the word prolio he, he gets, he gets down, there you have it. 
Nee, daar is de the, the true thing. Prolia Prokusi, rolled it in battle, mm -hmm. and then on the bottom of it, you know, we had our uh, 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 credo. Mm -hmm. Honesty, loyalty, justice. Honesty, dada, leal dada, justica. I mean, I mean, this is it. And this was done. There's nothing funny. The two spears is there. It shows you, you know, listen, that is it. But the real buffalo was the, the force, the real force. Mm -hmm. We all know a buffalo. It's a it's an animal that doesn't take shit, mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't take nonsense from nobody. I mean, a, a buffalo is, a, you know, you know what a, a buffalo is like. But the the point is still that wearing the camouflage, but if you served in a unit, not the commander of the time, not the uh, uh, the people afterwards, not the who and the what can feel about it. Can you young brother it? Listen. Have you, have you deployed? Have you been part of 3 to battalion? Or have you been in the bush? Have you been what? As your long as in the bush, it means that nobody was going to send me something. If the chef is in the bush, I mean, I, it means I wasn't in the bush because there is no chefs in bushes. So people must understand that's the way it works. And just to, 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 to get you also involved, you know what? People today, most of the people who's running their mouth off and think they really know what's going on and they are very smart, thinks about the, 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 the infantry bar. Now, the infantry bar, the infantry colors is green and black. Mm -hmm. Now, Satvi, the, 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 the military suppliers mm -hmm. of, you know, all the shops and the funny things it's called and the South African Defence Force Institute. That's right. Now, now they were supplying the badges and that, all that things. Uh, okay, they, they made it, they supplied it to, to the units. And what happens is that the, 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 the infantry bar is supposed to be green, black. And then what happened uh, it's it's in a in a golden frame, you know. But uh, I, when I say frame, I mean it's just a yellow uh, b b brass lining around it to keep it intact, you know. And and then what happened at a certain stage is that they decided, okay, to split the green and the black because dark green and black can 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 fool, you know. Sometimes it can look as if it's black or if it's green or whatever. If you look at from a side, then what happens? They put a very small little golden bar in the middle, and then by hook or by crook, one or other logistical patata in the past uh, 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 went and he opened it up, and they got a lot of infantry bars with green, yellow, black. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, because of the amount of money that was spent on it, they decided, okay, let us wear it like that. But that is the ANC colors. It's not the infantry color. The mm -hmm. true infantry color is green, black. And that's why all infantry flags uh, 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 raised in all the camps uh, is all green and black. So people are really off the wagon. They they make big mistakes. Uh, they they don't know what to say. And and when it comes to three to battalion, while Colonel Breitenbach is alive, he's the man to ask for. No one else can ever 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 even think that he's be better and smarter. Uh, it, it is you know what? It is very wrong. It's very wrong for anybody today. I agree. It's not every idiot in the world that can put on a beret and say, okay, I was, uh, you know, if he feels good, then, yeah, put it in your bar if you love the, mm -hmm. the berets or you're a collector, yeah, you, everybody can buy all the books and, 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 and some of the memorabilia, is that how you pronounce it? They, people can do that too, but seriously, there's no, no ways that you can change Colonel Breitenbach's decision on this. That is, I, I really hope people understand it very well. So if, if for instance, uh, Sister Jenny wants to wear a beret, a, a camouflage beret, she can wear the beret, she must just wear a medical bar. If uh, uh, Colonel Hannes Nordman wants to wear a beret, he puts a camo bray on his head with a armor bar. End of story. That's the rule. The logisticals, logistical bar. Signal, signal and bar. Uh, chef, a, 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 that core bar. You know, that, that's, that's how it works. Uh,
There's no, there's no, there's nothing else to say about the whole subject. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Let's move on to my final question of this session. And that is something that might be a bit controversial to you. Now, this is an opinion that I'm asking you. Sure, sure. And the opinion, it's quite easy. When do you feel that a 3-2 guy should wear his beret? At a formal function, must you have your I, I, I feel clothing? Or how uh, uh, you uh, listen, I feel that if you have, you know, at, a, at a formal function like uh, laying a reef, at a, at, a, at the stomp, you know, at the, at the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's also very important uh, uh, at, 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 at the funeral of an old moth member mm -hmm. or, or something like that. Because we, we, we don't have to wear moth jackets because we are already part of a group. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but you can't wear your beret uh, with your tracksuit and, and going to the, uh, to the, to the mall. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's ridiculous. Okay, so, so the question I want to pose to you now is quite easy. So we have a mutual friend that passed away recently, and his name was Des Berman. Uh, yes, 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 member. yes. And, and and sorry, sorry to interrupt there. I I, I just want to help you out, Peter. And now Des has already passed away. Yes. Now, yes. No, no, but you understand. Yes. And we were not at Des' funeral. Mm -hmm. No, no, we were not. But later on, say six months later. Mm -hmm. A group like the, the, the Johannesburg people or the Durban people or whatever, I, I'm just taking an example, gets together and they want to say, listen, tonight we're going to remember this Berman. They are more than welcome to wear the Street to Battalion uh, 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 clothes and the beret. But not, not I, I can't walk in there with my khakis or a T-shirt with my beret on. That, that's wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Chris, thank you very much. You are a wealth of wisdom about 3 2 and all its tradition. Yeah. Okay, so now we go on and, and, and we're discussing the, um, the 3 2 battalion traditions and so on. And I believe that you were intimately involved with uh, the choosing of the 3 2 battalion Leadwood stump that is now presently at the Footrecker Monument. Can you just tell us how it came about and uh, how it came about that they chose a Leadwood tree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not too difficult, you know. Leadwood is <laughs> is as hard as rock. Mm. I mean, and if you look at the buffalo's head and you look at the sea to uh, Osterovos, you know the 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 the, uh, the 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 terrible ones and things. And how indestructible is leadwood when it's dried and hard? Mm. Then then it's not a very very difficult choice, you know. But uh, what actually comes down to, you remember in the very beginning, like all military graveyards, the normal military graveyards, we also had the cement crosses, you know, and mm -hmm. with a with a ring around it and yeah. somebody's name in it and blah blah blah. And that's that's how the the the, the graveyard at Buffalo and at Pomfret looks like, because this is our tradition to put up the grave, to have the the funeral, the grave, and put up a cross. No, no, nothing. Nobody is allowed to put up his own things and everything it, it it was actually only supposed to be because you know you they, they, there's no difference in between rich and poor when it comes to a soldier it's a life a life is a life okay but what happened then uh, later on Colonel Fulhun decided listen no man come on you know with some people and they say no no let us let, let us have a place where we honor the people who died in action mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and and put their names up, you know, like like a small, like a small monument, a small monument. And then they said, okay, parade ground, you know, because mm. this is where people comes together, or the HQ, or you know, places mm. like that. And then they said, okay, but oh man, you know, granite, you know, the normal thing is most a mm. granite stone, mm. like you know, the graveyard stones and things like that. And and we 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 said no, you know, not we, not me. Uh, people said no, man, this is this is not a good idea. You, you, we are from nature, you know, we are in nature, we're living in nature, we're living in the West Capri Nature Reserve and things. Let's come up with something better. And then Sergeant Major uh, Franz Louis Smith, FL as we call them, of Rubber Bullet himself, 
Uh, then uh, Franz came in and he says, okay, but let's take a tree trunk, you know, and then everybody says, okay, a tree trunk, and he says, oh, but listen, let's get a big tree trunk, you know, something that can fit. Then they say, okay, you know, it's a smart idea to talk about it, you know, what will you do? And I believe, and I believe it was 84, yeah, somewhere around there. It was 84. Yeah, yeah, okay, somewhere around there. I'm sorry, you know, I, I can make this, so I was more in the bush than in the base, so I can't really remember all these little things. And then Sergeant Major found your bear, who was the regimental sergeant I just said, OK, uh, uh, France would then start working on it. And they went and they collected, uh, they, they, they selected this, this tree trunk and then France started working on the tree trunk mm -hmm. to get a flat surface, as you can see here, mm -hmm. to get a flat surface, you know, to put the little plaques up. And you know what, uh, if you take 1984, all right, you can check on it for dates. Uh, there was quite a lot of dead soldiers already, you know. But, I mean, uh, if you have a unit and you believe your unit is going to be there forever, now please make space enough for future. You know, uh, this thing is not a thing that's supposed to stop, okay? It did. And I'm, I'm the happiest person in the world. Uh, 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 President Leclerc did me a personal favor by 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 this banning three to battalion before they could fuck it up mm -hmm. but in any case uh, uh, uh yeah it's my feeling mm -hmm. I, 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 people can agree with me they can they, they just not stand close to me when they disagree because i lose my temper but in any case and and then what happened is france worked on it if you smith did this, it was his project, he worked on it, the colonel fighted a lot with him, they first, they, they, they put varnish on it, you know, and, and varnish is, is not always the best choice, you know, and then they, the oil, oil is always the best, because, you know, oil comes out, but it doesn't scuff, you know, scuff off, you know, that, that, is. so then they started putting up, you'll see, Ribeiro is up there, and, 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 and Lieutenant Swart, you know, from, from from 1976, you know, they come up. All of that names comes up there, and then uh, obviously, then uh, you know, in the unit this band, okay, then the the trunk stops. You know, anybody dies afterwards. Now, sorry, your name can't be on there. That's the way it works, uh, Peter. That that's that yes. that that's the way so, our tree trunk works. But the tree trunk was put up at the Palacio in in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, 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 and it was very, very beautiful and everybody came around and checked it, you know, there at the centre. And then what happened later on, you know, it moved to uh, Pomfret, uh, obviously, because the unit moved to Pomfret. Mm -hmm. And then later on it moved to Zierest. Mm -hmm. But that was actually not the right move, because as soon as the unit disbanded, it became two SAI, two yes. South African Infantry Unit. Uh, and, and then they moved to Zeres, and the, the trunk, the stomp, moved with them, and then they uh, take it back to the, uh, the Fort Tracker Monument in Pretoria, and they put it up there, and it's re definitely one of the better places to be, because oh. now all forces, and it doesn't make a difference, whoever, even, even MK Apla, mm -hmm. everybody is there on the wall, and the, the persons who are not happy, I'm sorry you're not dead yet, because dead people are happy dead people. people, yeah, so that's the end of it, there's no arguments mm -hmm. about the trunk. And then let's continue on this uh, theme of doing traditions and tell us about the mug. I brought my mug. I see, I see. It's beautiful. It's yeah, the, yeah the, pewter pewter the, the pewter mug. It's mm. quite expensive, all these mm. pewter mugs with a glass bottom. There people can see. So can you tell us with the, the glass reason bottom? why this tradition was started and by who? Yeah, there actually... I am not a hundred percent sure, but this is actually a much older tradition than a three two tradition. Mm -hmm. This comes from Vikings, this comes from the old English, that comes from the SAS. All very old recognized mm -hmm. units have this tradition of you've got your muck with a glass uh, a, a bottom mm -hmm. uh, and, and then yeah, a glass bottom, and then what happens if somebody dies? you know, then they break the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, don't break your bottom because I have to kill you afterwards. No, 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 <laughs> I'm just saying, so I'm just saying. No, no, in the end, you know, this is what they did then. Mm -hmm. Then they break it because no one else will ever be 
drinking out of that mm. mug. Okay. It was his mug. Mm. The person with the name on it, it was his mug. The only problem, and, and that's how I feel, this personal, how I feel about it, because the mug is so expensive, the unit couldn't make mugs for everybody, mm. because it's very expensive. I, I, mm. I, I, to be honest, I don't know, but it's, 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 it's a price. It's, it's, it's expensive. And then we only paid for our own mugs. But then, not everybody does have a mug, so this tradition is actually only amongst us, but there is a few of the black uh, soldiers as well that does have mugs, so it's, it's not... Uh, yeah. so, so let me just refresh you that the 3-2 Battalion Veteran Association, yeah. after the unit closed down, yeah. is now the custodian of our traditions. Yeah, and yeah, they, They've look. given permission now, because this was an officer tradition, and then they gave permission for the non-commissioned officers as well, and the troops as well can acquire their own mugs. I understand, but as I say, it's an expensive thing and mm. it's not really easy for an old retired soldier yeah. to go and buy the mug. You know what? It was a tradition only for officers and sergeant majors, mm. which is also seen as an officer oh, stage. Yeah. That's why. Uh, and then later on it became the NCOs as well. And now, you know, ach, you know when you're in a, in a disband unit or a unit that stop existing anymore and you want to continue with traditions I mean if the staff sergeant is longer lasting than any other officer you know uh, you, you want the tradition to continue but obviously the tradition will stop in future yeah. when the last three two soldiers is dead mm. who had a mark mm. so yeah it's part of life that's mm. the way it is there's, there's no arguments on so tell me because what do they do when the the, the the bottom of the mug has now been uh, broken what do they do with the mug I, I you know they give it to the family but I, I would actually say you know uh, uh, it would be nice if, if they put it in the museum, you know, in Johannesburg at the War Museum, because the War Museum will be there forever. Hopefully, hopefully, we will be there forever. Okay, it will definitely last much longer than my home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no, you, but you understand, Peter. I mean, I can, you know what, this, this is the problem with a lot of, of memorial, memorabilia, that's, thank you, Peter. Uh, 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 it, and, and the thing is, many people have beautiful things at home, but when he passes away, the kids, you know, they, what, what do they feel for it? You know, they, they have a feeling, some, you know, but okay, I, I have three sons, so I'm taking an example now. This one wants the bray, and that one wants the muck, and that one wants the this and the that. So now they split it up. To me, I, I feel that it would always be better, especially after somebody passed away, that take his stuff, get to the museum, hang it there, and if the museum is too small, make money and buy bigger space. That's it. That, that, that's what I, how I feel about this. Because thank you very, very much for it, it's your a pleasure. interesting history about the memorabilia. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, sir. Thank you.